Absolutely. Stone Rose on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais, with me Steve Merchant. Hello there. And Carl Pilgton for the last time, Indeed. I'm afraid. Yes. So, um, you know, we're gonna have a little bit of a chat, we're sewing up some things with Carl. Indeed. We're giving away that, that prize, that BAFTA bag and, you know. Playing some great music. And we're just, I mean, we're, I'm bringing in my favourite tunes. I'm bringing the Smiths, Radiohead, Cat Stevens, David Bowie, Neil Young, the classics, Steve's doing the same. Indeed. Um, well, Carl. The last time for, uh, yeah, I've, apparently, um, someone's got it a bit wrong. We're not actually away for six weeks. We're away for about, oh, we'll be back in, uh, August, won't we? What the hell? Yeah. No, don't swear. Yeah, that's outrageous. On the last show, you have to say that. Already brought the tone down. Yeah. Cheapened it. And I think it's blasphemous as well. Yeah. No, it's not. No hell isn't, is it? Isn't it? No, I don't think that's not blasphemy, is it? Taking Hell's name in vain? Yeah. Yeah, but what was it you were saying the other week about the Queen Mum used to have a right mouth on her? What? No. I don't think we said that on air, Carl. What? No, no but last week you, yeah. you were saying about ba bad language and I was saying, oh, it, you know, there'll come a time when bad language isn't, you know, doesn't matter anymore. You can F and Jeff and stuff. Oh, I know what he's talking about, Steve. Really? Right, let me explain to you, the listener at home. Um, Carl was worried about swearing and as a joke, off air, it was last week, we were saying that, um, the qu uh, in the 1940s and 50s, the Queen Mum used to say things like, and we were quoting things she'd said, yeah. like, I'm saying, like, but putting F's and C's in there, and you believed us. What, so this whole week you've believed that we somehow, somehow had knowledge that, that the, the Queen, Queen Mum used to, to swear like a trooper? We were doing fake quotes from her in her voice, but putting in F's and C's, and you believed us. I mean, I didn't even think, I thought you were going along with a joke, but it obviously made an impact. Carl, we've it. said this, you've got to question and query everything. You can't take things at face value, certainly not if they come up the mouths of Ricky Gervais. Yeah. All right. Yeah, sorry about that, Carl, it was a little, a little trick. Uh, is there any other things now that, as is you look back over these times we've been thinking about that I can tell you now that was a lie? Anything you've maybe queried or questioned, you, you know, you've thought, oh, that doesn't seem right, that maybe Ricky's told you? Something might come to me okay. l later on, but... Okay. Well, what about Carl? I mean, it's, we we love you, right, obviously, we know that. We've, we've, got, we've got great affection for you. We look forward to this. I'm gonna miss you, really, but... And I'll tell you what, you've got a heart of gold. Now, wait till you see what the record is, Steve, and you'll see what I've done. Is it a heart of gold? Yeah. Brilliant. Brilliant. All right. That's why he's a bronze award winner at the Sonys. I don't get up for bronze. I don't get out of bed for bronze. No, that's a waste of our time. Pilkerton over there on XFM 104.9, winner of a bronze award at the Sony at the Sony's. Radio Awards. The Radio Oscars, so Phil Jupiter said. That's what he called them on Liquid I, News. I'll tell you this, Rick, I'm not used to being on a table with losers at an awards ceremony. No. I, I, I don't, I, this, I, I'm glad, I didn't want to come in to do the final show. No. You know, no. I went straight over and sat with Pete and Jeff, didn't I? Yeah. <laughs> I went over Radio the, uh, 4, I went over with Paul Gambaccini. I went I over said. to BBC World Service. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's a lot funkier. A lot yeah. cooler. Won an award. Yeah, won, uh, won they, an award. They swept the boards. Yeah. I don't, uh, bronze is nowhere. What was the mood, uh, what was Silver's, the mood here? Silver's, what was the mood here? The mood, uh, Because the day after, because people were, I mean, I, let me tell you that, I think XFM deserved an award, and I thought it was, it was criminal, actually. But what I did like, that's quite, it, that we certainly had the room, because Pete and Jeff, said good luck to us and Christian, that was really nice. And then someone else mentioned it. Ja um, James Nesbitt. James Nesbitt yeah. said, uh, 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 XFM and stuff, so yeah. it Paul, certainly Paul had Gambacini the- Paul said something about it. Yeah. Did so he? It Paul Gamba? Yeah. It certainly had the room. And for a local, you've got to realise it's a local radio station, yeah. you know, and, uh, it's good. You, you can't compete, really, with Radio 2 and Radio 4 and But what was the mood, uh, the day after? Here um, at XFM? It was all right. I mean, I think we expected a few more, but... but you shouldn't take this thing seriously anyway. No, but, what I did, yeah, but what I didn't realise, never take Rick, awards seriously. But what I didn't realise is you have to pay thousands of pounds just to nominate. Just You're to joking. get, just to get into the running for an award. So, you've already, you know, they've squandered thousands of pounds. No, just it's not a thousand, is. is it? Well, it, it mounts up because you pay for it to enter. And right. then the table. You've got to buy, like, mini discs and that to send your stuff in on. Which sure. Up with Sony mini discs. Mm. Oh, I see what you're saying, <laughs> Carl. I'm not saying anything. No. Mm. Um, and also then you've got to pay for the table. Right. And, and the food and the drink. I mean, it's a few grand. I swore on live television as well that night. Yeah. But I've never done that before. I mean, I've never, I've sworn before, but, but never accidentally. And we, we were being interviewed for, um, and Christian was sort of like, quite, you know, being a bit boisterous and he must have brought out the worst of me and I just accidentally said the F word and I apologised straight away. I didn't want to embarrass Phil Jupus. 
<laughs> he was well, doing a good job. He does job. that himself, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, I, but I was thinking about yesterday and you are saying a bronze isn't worth having, right? Yeah. But, say <laughs> like- <laughs> We're only joking, then none of them are worth having, but they're very nice- they're No. very nice to no, win. No, bronze is pointless. <laughs> But you say that, cos like, <coughs> bron <coughs> bronze is like coming last, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Can you tell me the name of the person who won the marathon this year? No. Yeah, but that's cos we're not sporty. Well, I'm sure there's lots that can. But yeah. then, the guy who came last, who was in the swimsuit, <laughs> people it, remember him. And no, I don't last. remember his name either. No, what was his name? No, no, but he was six days late. I mean, he was really Yeah, but what was his name then? Uh, you see, no one's remembering either. No, but if someone said who won the marathon, I'd go, I don't know, but there was that guy in the swimsuit. Well, I'd say, I don't know, it was a woman. Yeah. She had, she had shorts on and trainers. I'm just trying to make My point is, what they will remember <laughs> is that we were losers. That's <laughs> what they remember. <laughs> they may not remember our names. Yeah. They're just point and shout losers. We're all winners, though, aren't we? We're all winners, really. For taking part, sure. Well, yeah. And it's all subjective as well, isn't it? Go on. I mean, I'm not gonna moan about awards, cos you've won a lot of them. It's like saying they don't mean Jack. But yeah. at the end of the day, right, there's some shows that won awards and you go, yeah, that, that's, you know, that's worth an award. I, got, I, th I think you've got to treat it, I mean, some awards actually boost your profile or career or your cachet or anything like that. Some it's just a nice night out when it's nice to win, but I don't think you should really take any award that seriously. What worries me though, Rick, as I mentioned on the night, is that I, when I was at school, was, I mean, you look at me now, you probably think he's an athletic kind of guy, he's a sporty dude, you know, but at school, bizarrely, that was not the case. No, what were you, I a bit of a lanky bean <laughs> <bowl with laughs> It turns out, yeah. you're joking. Yeah. Oh, right, okay. So, uh, but, and yet I got a silver, uh, in the high jump. Yeah. And I've done better in the high jump, right? Did no training whatsoever, did yeah. no practice, just turned up. You were two and a half foot taller than every other well, person in your class. Yeah, but wait a minute, people think that if you're tall, that makes you easier, it makes it easier for you to do the high jump. Surely not, because I've got all that leg to get over the pole. That don't, makes it harder, harder for me, surely. Don't talk rubbish. What are you talking about? Well, of course the taller you are, the more chance you got on the high jump. T well, explain Everything that to me. Oh, what? Uh, are you- okay then. So, is it harder for a six foot man to step over a matchbox, or a baby midget? A baby midget? <laughs> that is <laughs> tiny, Rick. Hang on. <laughs> what? Here's something I've learned, remember? Go Going on. Back to like, show four or whatever. Go on. What show is it? four? The flea can jump over the London Eye. No! No, yeah. it can jump the equivalent of if it was a six foot man. It can jump about six inches high. A flea cannot jump over the London Eye. Y yes, it can. Yeah, it can. And <laughs> tell, 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 tell your kids that. Carl. Oh. Well, remember. Oh, a flea can jump over the London Eye. And an ant can lift yeah. three Volvos. <laughs> <laughs> but, you're, <laughs> but you're talking about fitness people and that. Remember when we were in the pub, right? Yeah. And um, your mate Johnny was in there. Yeah. I think it was. Yeah. And he was talking about that guy who got done, right? Because he entered a wheelchair race. Yeah. And, he sh and there was nothing wrong with him. His legs were all right. Yeah. yeah. Now, he got done. Because he shouldn't have been involved in it. Yeah. But don't you think that really, he's really good for doing that, because he's not normally in a wheelchair. Sure. So he's not used to how they move about. Yeah. His arms aren't as strong as the other fellas who are always in the yeah. wheelchair. Sure. He had surely, his mate pushing him, that was surely, the problem. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it was motorised. Yeah. <laughs> I'd give him a gold plus. <laughs> just, just, uh, uh, you know, you're taking a bloke who's not used to doing something, he does it the first time and beats the people who are at it. What well, about that woman, brilliant. though, that was disqualified in the shooting, cos she was in a wheelchair and she was just in the normal, uh, able-bodied Olympics, it was just a, no, she ended, right? But she wasn't allowed to rest her elbow on the arm of her chair, cos I was saying it's advantage. So she was in a wheelchair and she's shooting, but she was getting unfair advantage and they said, you, you cannot put your elbow on the arm of your Sneaky, aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> no, they are. You gotta be careful. You gotta be careful. Do you wanna play a- Some of them aren't even disabled, it turns out. <laughs> Hold on, though. We're talking about athletes, aren't we? What record should we play next? I'd love to hear uh, that- that single that was out a couple athlete. of months back by Athlete. athlete. Let's have Athlete. athlete. Man alive. Athlete. <laughs> West Side by Athlete, a track that I know you and I have enjoyed- uh, Yeah, it's one of our favourite new tracks of the year, that one. Yeah. Absolutely. Very good. More- more of our favourite tracks to come on XFM 104.9. You know, me, I was Bays, and you, Steve Merchant, and uh, Carl Perkinson. Sure, go on. Uh, you know, I was mentioning Shoot. the high jump. <laughs> that yeah. high jump. Uh, do you know the reason I didn't get the gold? It's, quite, it's faintly embarrassing because the guy was—it was just neck and neck, me and another guy. In fact, he was slightly shorter than I was, and I was using the traditional Fosby flop. Is it the Fosby flop? Fosby flop. Fosby flop. And um, and he was using a method which I can only describe as the Superman, where he was running at the bar <laughs> and diving headfirst over it. I've never seen this technique before. It's illegal. That's Absolutely why. incredible. Is it not yeah. allowed? 
The Fuzz Rock only works because his shoulder and that are going over before his head. Right. That's that's they got around the wall. You weren't allowed to right. dive over because it was obviously too easy. no one monitoring that. Yeah. No Just the game teachers having a quick fag. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what was his name again? The the yeah the fag. <laughs> uh, I think his name was Mr. Woodbine. <laughs> 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 um, <laughs> but uh, he um. Anyway, so he's using this method, right, and, and it gets neck and neck, and uh, I don't know how many chances you get to knock down the bar, but anyway, it got to the point where basically I had to get over the bar, or right. I was going to come second. Sure. And I decided at that point to use his method, because <laughs> he'd seem to be doing so well with it, I thought, well, I'll try that then, that looks oh, easy. Oh, dear. And ran at the bar, launched, didn't actually get my feet off the ground, just hit the bar like I was someone finishing a, a race, you know. Did the you line. have... It was so pathetic, it just clattered everywhere. I just want to get this picture of, of you at the age of, what, 15, 16? Yeah, yeah. Six foot five already, probably? Yeah, probably, yeah, uh, yeah. Probably, what, about nine stone? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah. Did you have your glasses on? <laughs> of course I did. That you must have looked pretty probably, sexy. Probably a small bum fluff tash. Yeah. Yeah. As well. That must have been good. That was it good true looking. once, when you were about 16, you decided to wear a dicky bow to school? Yeah. That yeah. must have been great. That was during my PG Woodhouse phase. <laughs> 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 you thought yeah. you'd be a hit with the ladies if I you thought, were more sophisticated. Well, not only that, I thought it made me kind of kooky and eccentric. Yeah. Like I wasn't already. <laughs> Six foot seven, yeah, god yeah. lied. Yeah. <laughs> like they're not already thinking there goes a weirdo. Yeah, oh, he's yeah. a weirdo with yeah. a bow tie. Yeah. Brilliant. Does it spin round, mate? Yeah, what Because you're getting me hot. <laughs> exactly. Oh, dear. Yeah, I wore that for about, um... For about six months, and it was in school colours, because we had to wear a tie, so it's cool, but this was a bow tie. I mean, now I don't... Oh, man. I can't believe it. I don't it. know what I was Carl, thinking. Uh, when you were, um, uh, a little Pilkington, right, what, what was... If you had hair, what would it be like? What do you mean? Well, you obviously had hair then, back then. What was the, uh, style? Um, it was like, uh... Sort of... I had, I had quite sort of, uh, <laughs> fine, uh, sort of straight hair. Yeah. Right. Um, hairdresser once said to me, you've got hair of a Chinaman. <laughs> <laughs> he was a wise man, wasn't he? What do you think that meant then? Oh! He just said, he, he, he just said, you've got the same hair as, as a Chinese man has. Very straight, quite fine. Um, <laughs> why, is, why is he telling it? I just imagine this bar going, the arse was well, didn't it, sir? <laughs> do, 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 do. Should I have something on that? You've got that you have the hair of a Chinaman. <laughs> I'm sorry, nothing. <laughs> you're not the spy. No, I'm not. Thank you. Good night. <laughs> oh, you're not you my Yeah, lovely. You have the feet of a fish. I'm sorry, nothing. <laughs> it's not you. Okay, next. You have the hair of a Chinaman. It was, it was one of those barbers, um, it was a cheap one, just on a, on a railway bridge. I don't believe that. Go on. On a railway bridge? <laughs> That's why it was cheap. It was very low rent, so he could charge. That wasn't the barber. Bit. That was a man with some scissors. <laughs> yeah. Did you have to, go, oh, have to move you there, sir? Wow. <laughs> yeah. Okay, back in the chair, sir. <laughs> I one. imagine them on one of those things you always see in old films where you've got you to, have to pump it down, down, up and down, down yeah, like a seesaw. Yeah, that's wasn't that as good as that. It was just a normal chair, little wooden hut, and <laughs> it did have to stop when a train came past because it used to. Well, because he had to change the signals. <laughs> Just making a few extra bars. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Oh, I love That's that. That's Manchester for you. Oh, God. I, I always oh, it wasn't him. Bernard Cribbins, was it? <laughs> I always remember him saying, do you want your hair washing? And I said, uh, is it free? You know, does it come with it? And he said, yeah. <laughs> so I said, oh, go on then. He said, hang on now, I'll just have to wash these mugs up. He had like a sink full of mugs. Oh, he said, I'll God. I'll just take these out and then I can wash your head. <laughs> oh, no. And that's why. <laughs> why did you go to this man? It was cheap. It was How like, much was it? About two quid. And when was this? Uh, God, about 80, 88, 89. All right. Yeah. So what happened to your, uh, your Chinese hair? Uh, when did it start coming out? You have, you have the hair of a bald Chinaman now, yeah. don't you? <laughs> <laughs> You've got the hair of a Chinaman in a box now. <laughs> 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 oh. I used to just, um, work a, work a lot of hours, and I think... <laughs> That's what made it fall out. Yeah, yeah, of course. It's no, it's like not. It's genetic. You can't stop it. It's not it, genetic. Of course it is. Is your dad bald? Uh, no, it's, um, it's got more hair than me now, I think. Is your mum? Uh, Kojak's got more hair than you, Carl. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> don't have a go at Carl's hair. That's a bit harsh. <laughs> oh, look at his little what, face. What, what did it say before in that book about going bald? It said, uh... It had a little tip, didn't it? We'll, we'll go over them later. Uh, it says, uh, if you're going thin, doesn't it say, um, cut your hair short and something like that So it too. makes you look thicker. 
<laughs> yeah. Oh, oh yeah, we got um people are offering Carl lots of we're, we're coming up to that in yeah, a few, well, we'll few minutes. Sorry, yeah. obviously we to uh, win that BAFTA bag. Shall I remind people what the competition was? Yeah. Um last week we uh, were giving away this bag that we got signed by various celebrities at the BAFTAs and uh, we asked you to uh, email or uh, write in with your suggestions as to what you have that you could swap for the bag and it has to be something that will enhance Carl's life. We've had quite a, a lot of uh, suggestions. I'll go through those a bit later, but they're um some of them are quite eccentric. Meanwhile, I'm going to play one of my favourite songs off one of my favourite albums. I look forward to hearing it. It's Radiohead, it's The Benz, and this is Black Star. Go for it. Sugar Cubes. Hit. Yeah, on XFM 104.9. Our last show. Our last show till August. Absolutely. Sorry about that. We, we'll miss it. We, we, we can't avoid it, really. We've got to go away and do some filming. And, uh, they're only going to miss you anyway, Carl. They could do without us now. Zoe yeah. Ball's on. Yeah, Zoe Ball. And who else is after her? She's not doing the whole run, is she? Um, yeah, I think so. Is she doing the whole the whole yeah. three months, is she? Yeah. Tell her not to get too comfortable. Uh -huh. Right. Right? Feet... And don't let Big Boy Slim come in with her, because he mixes up the records, doesn't he? And ruins them. Yeah. Hey, talking of DJing. Go on. You know, I did that storming set the other night well, uh, yeah. for XFM. Yeah, sure, yeah. Go on. Uh, this was down at a little club, in case you weren't aware of it. Yeah. Anyway, I uh, went to the uh, Sony's the other night. Yeah. Carl Pilkington uh, sidles up to me, yeah. slips me an envelope. Go on. Oh, 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 200 big ones in there. Did you get paid cash for that? Yeah. 200 Did pounds. Taxman won't know about that. Cash in hand. No, the taxman won't know, because, I mean, obviously, no one who ever works in tax office is listening to local radio. Oh. Yeah. Well, so... No, the taxman will know about it. Yeah. Because I'll declare it. Oh, I, I would. Put it, yeah, it's going straight down. I'll do it when I get home. <laughs> do it when I get in later on. And don't write off rubbish that you buy anyway, like, you know. No, yeah. I won't. No. I'll do it all above board officially. <laughs> Fill it all in correctly. And so I'll send it now, I'll send it tomorrow so that you get it early. So it's not too busy oh. for you, sir. Oh, never mind. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, also, uh, did you see, uh, Liquid News last night? No. What is uh, Liquid News? I don't really watch it. It's the news. thing on, um, um, Choice, right, and it's, uh, sort of celebrity news, yeah? And, um, uh, Julian Clary, uh, was on, and, uh, they were talking about the Sony Awards the night before, which we went to, and they said, uh, something like, um, a relatively unknown had won the Entertainment Award that we were up for, and Christian and Chris Moyles and Jonathan Ross said, uh, um, uh, uh, beating off bigger people. Not he was beating off bigger people. <laughs> they weren't suggesting he was... Was he Julian Clary beating off other than <laughs> Yeah. Um, and it said, so, uh, the people who didn't win resorted to silliness. And it cut, right, then, I don't know where the camera was, it must have been miles away, because it wasn't us, cut to me making a little hat for you out of a Budweiser box, a little dialect thing, and then forcing it on your head, and you sort of struggling. Do you remember that? I do remember it. Yeah. Th so but that, they were... They're always well, watching. they were filming us. They were filming it, yeah. Scary. So. Yeah. That's really scary, because some of the things we were doing... Because I was tying scarves around your head, wasn't I? We were... We were... Uh, we, we were, were touching Carl we in an intimate way. We were gaining him up. Gaining him we, up. To make him feel all uncomfortable and everything. Because he doesn't like that sort of thing, do you? Can't stand it. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to be giving you a cuddle about five to three, seriously. Yeah. We are going to... On the way out... And I've got roaming hands. Yeah. Do you know them girls who came up from the Radio Academy and sort of said, Oh, so you're Carl then? Right, yeah. yeah. A couple of fans went up to Carl. Yeah. Uh, just, just on the way out, I said to him again, I said, look, I'm not gay. <laughs> because they were convinced I was. <laughs> That's because they, we, if you remember a couple of weeks ago, we, we teased Carl that he had to go as Steve's partner, um, to the BAFTAs, and they really meant partners. You know, after the show, when he was walking home, he was gonna go buy a suit, I actually said, they will, they will ask you. He went, well, what if they say, and they, uh, as we walk in, Steve Merchant and his boyfriend, Carl, uh, well, they might say that as you walk in, they might overdub it on the television, so, he's going, well, what about my mates in Manchester? <laughs> and he said, I'm not going. <laughs> the risk of someone in Manchester thinking, thinking that he was going, going out with you, yeah. mind you, it wasn't, it was probably right, going, wow, well, well, if he was going to see where you're going no, with if, you, if you were going to be gay, you wouldn't choose Steve, would you? No. Who would you, who would you choose if you were gay? Uh, if you could go out with any bloke, who would it be? That's a good one. Yeah. Um, that's a good one. He's thought about it before. Go on. No, 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 no of course not. No, no, no. no, who would it be? Who, 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 if, you know, if you were gay, what bloke would you go out with? God, probably, uh... Jonathan Ross is all right. You gay? Oh, you, you fancy Jonathan Ross? You bender? Oh, oh bender! Rossy! Oh, oh, you've got his Jonathan. number, haven't you? We should get oh, contact. I love you, Jonathan. You. Jonathan, I love your 
film show. It was so funny and handsome and well done. Rock and roll with me, David Bowie, off uh, Diamond Dogs. Another one of my favourite tracks. Cracking. Great track, mm. isn't it? Mm. Well, it's time for um, Carl's Room 101. Carl was too shy to obviously ever do this for real, but um, we thought that end end the uh, the run of this with uh, things that Carl hates. Yeah, we, we, we know the thing he likes. We know the, so, uh, Carl. Okay. We should just point out that we've uh, been inspired by the TV show Room 101. We didn't come up with this ourselves. Yeah, we did. <laughs> this is Room 102. <laughs> yeah, we'll be Paul Merton, and you be Carl Pilkington. Right. right. You could try to banish to Room 101 all those things that you dislike, never, they're never to be seen again. Will you please welcome Carl Pilkington? All right. Who? How are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> all right. Carl, so what's your first, what does this represent? And imagine me putting some on a, right. on a table next to you. Go on. Right. Well, first of all, right, it's dead hard to come up with like five things that drive you up the wall. Okay. Right. It's not easy because there's so many things. Yeah. But it's just like, you know, picking five, it's like someone saying, pick your five favourite records or five favourite films. Yeah. Sure. It's hard, so... You know in Desert Island Discs where they, you, you always get the complete works of Shakespeare in the Bible? Yeah. I think you should include Ricky Gervais. I think you should always be there, already <laughs> in Room 101. They don't have to nominate you. <laughs> you, all, you always go in. <laughs> 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 go on then, go on then. Right. Go so, so don't bother putting him in. Don't bother putting Ricky in, Carl. He's already yeah, there. He's already, I'm already there, waiting. Yeah. Go on then. Right. Yeah. First of all, right, I thought I thought of like uh, things that we've done in the past. Sure. And like quotes and that that you yeah. were talking about. Yeah. That 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 quote that people say that uh, you know money doesn't make you happy. Yeah. yeah. Right. We just we just rattling through some here. Yeah. That that annoys me. What? Well, money the quote doesn't money doesn't make you happy. Yeah, because it does. It clearly does. <laughs> <laughs> right. W without it, life's pretty dull, isn't it? Yeah. Good. Right? So, okay. So that's like a little short, short thing, and and huh. you know, then then that sort of makes you think about people with money. There was yeah. a program on in the week. I don't know if you saw it, Steve. The the one uh, posh loaded. That was brilliant, wasn't it? That was a great show. So annoying. Oh yeah. There was a girl on there, right? Who's from a from a rich family and that, and uh, you know, it's not her fault. She's from a rich family. No. It's like how posh people annoy people. That doesn't annoy me, because the way I sound is because of where I'm brought up and that. Yeah. And at the end of the day, if you if you sound posh, you sound posh. It's, yeah. You know, it doesn't change you as a person or whatever. Yeah, yeah. it's quite But true. this girl, right, um, did you see it, Steve? I did. You didn't see it, I did you, Ricky, know. right? This girl goes shopping, she buys like four t-shirts and a crappy little handbag. Yeah. Spends about 1,300 quid, and she's just wasting it going, you know, the woman's saying, uh, Oh, you'll love these, you know, they're really in fashion, so oh, whatever, I'll probably only wear them once anyway. And it's just, that sort of thing annoys me. Yeah. You know, people with money, y you know, who have grafted for it, are good, but like, um, you know, people who, who just get money given to them from the rich parents trying to make the world. There was another point, right, where she's in a shoe shop, right, and, um, she, she's like, got these big boots and stuff, <laughs> uh, but part of the problem is, right, She's quite odd looking in that, right? <laughs> but she's got a lot of money, so she makes herself look half decent. Yeah. <laughs> Problem is, she's got fat ankles. She's got what? Fat ankles. Right. And they drive her up the wall because no matter. I mean, it's <laughs> one of them things, isn't it? It's almost like God has gone. Yeah, you can have all the toffees and stuff you want. You can have like your nice t-shirts, but at the end of the day, love, you're stuck with these ankles, and you can see. <laughs> Dear God, say yeah. right. You can have all the toffees you want, yeah, and you have nice handbags and that. But you're stuck with these ankles. Oh God! And, and I really wanted to get a job in that shoe shop where she was going in, blowing her dad's money, and she was calling up her dad, saying, "Oh, daddy, is it all right if I, you know, I'm just out shopping? I've just bought some shoes that that have cost like a grand, and oh. I really wanted a, a job in that shoe shop." Just so I could sit there, and when she comes in, you go, "Oh, hello, love, whatever her name is. Lovely to see you here again." Got some lovely new shoes in. Got look at these nice new boots. Everyone's wearing them. Victoria Beckham, and you know all the it girls are wearing them. Yeah, try them on. Oh, you can't because your ankles are so fat. You can't get into these. <laughs> Never mind. Here's some boots. <laughs> <laughs> she really annoyed me, and I'm not a nasty person. You're but not. She she brought it out of me. Oh, oh I'm worried though. This idea of you getting a job in a shoe shop. I'm not sure you're qualified. Well, <laughs> I like the, all the, the that's way round it. That yeah. some people go, oh, I'd like her to lose all her money or something. He'd mm. like to actually bother yeah. go through getting the job in the shop, yeah, and then just wait in there. You'd be too busy mucking around outside like, on some kind of trolley stuck in a little lake. <laughs> yeah, <I'm> like, 
<laughs> but interestingly in that show, I was watching that show, and at one point, um, you mentioned that her fat heels, or her fat ankles, yeah. um, her, her, she said, I'd like to do, I'd like to have various changes to my body, I know, plastic surgery, I'd like to do this to my face, and da 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 And, uh, her mum's there, and her mum's going, no, don't be, so that's how, no, you're my daughter, you're beautiful, da 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 No, you shouldn't, I'm not gonna let you have those, da da She went, I'd love to have an operation on my fat ankles. Her mum went, yeah, I do agree with that. <laughs> <laughs> What kind of a mother does that? <laughs> oh, how bad can fat ankles be? I know. What were these ankles like? Well, tell us, Rick, you must know. No, <laughs> no they, do you know what I mean, though? like, if you said to a little kid, to a four-year-old kid, draw a person, that's, they'd draw her legs. Do you know where there's no sort of thin bit, and then it comes out a bit for your knees? Oh, yeah, and they just ankles. It was just like two logs. People go and say, I like your new flares. What do you mean flares? <laughs> They're leggings. <laughs> Cheeky. Oh, Awful, oh. so, you know. It's okay, so you're putting in... F posh girls with fat ankles. Yeah. yeah okay. What's what's your next one on room one hundred and one? Right. Another quick one, really. Go on. Um, people in supermarkets. <laughs> right. What the people um, who serve? Yeah. Ma it's mainly um, these these shops you get round in London that are like open twenty four hours. Right. Yeah. You'll go in and you'll buy uh, your you know you don't do your main shop there. It's mainly just little bits in it. Your, yeah. your carton of milk and uh, sure maybe a loaf couple of balm cakes and that. Yeah. And you go in there. <laughs> Who still buys balm cakes? <laughs> right? Do they so, have them in yeah, London? Yeah, 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 yeah. Do you ever uh, ask? Would you be annoyed if they said balm cakes? We don't have those down here. They're rubbish. That's <laughs> happened before when I asked for gravy and they didn't know what gravy <laughs> was. <laughs> when did you ask for gravy? In a chippy. <laughs> what do you mean? What do you say? Have you got any gravy? Uh, just, just because you, you do, you, up north you have chips and pie and gravy on it. And yeah. they didn't have a clue what I was talking about. Right, okay. So that, that annoys me, actually. Stick that on the list. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, You've got fish men up north. But, but listen, right? <laughs> you, you'll go we saw a sign in the north, right? It was a little shop, and the sign said, we sell bread. And it was, <laughs> it was handwritten. It was like, there was probably a, like a rush with those people in <laughs> exactly. turbans going, uh, What's this but, bread you talk of? Yeah. Little, little their headscarves, <laughs> old women running down with their little, oh. <laughs> but anyway, these shops, right? So you go in there, getting your stuff. And you'll go up to the till, and they don't say hello to you. They they don't sort of smile. They just bleep the stuff through. Mm -hmm. They don't tell you how much it is. They just sort of expect you to look at the till to see how much it is. So yeah. you can get your hand in your pocket, give them the money. They'll give you the change, and they won't say goodbye. Yeah. So yeah, it's yeah. like they just can't be asked to, sure. to have any sort of hello. How are you doing? Yeah. I don't. I don't want a big chat. I don't want to know what they're getting up to and sure. what you know what the dad does for a living and all that. I just want <laughs> like, how are you doing? You know, you're well, right? Uh, oh yeah, this, this bread's you know popular or whatever. Uh, right, that'll be <laughs> five pounds. You, you, you need to keep abreast of which <laughs> bread you're selling. Well, oh, mother's pride. That's a good choice. It's, uh, <laughs> it's, uh, it's, uh, seventy percent of our whole stock. <laughs> so that really, even though you know it is a twenty-four hour. I'll be shop, honest. I. I, I I would err on the side of silence, not not rudeness. I hate rudeness if they do that. But I I, I would rather um, I'd start to go uh, one pound fifty, please, and that'd be fine for me. Any more? What about uh, like, hello and goodbye? Have a good day. Not in an American way. It doesn't way. bother me. I've got, I mean, I I prefer people who say have a nice day and and don't mean it to people who don't say it at all and don't mean it. To be honest, I, I'm I'm I, I don't worry about that mock sincerity because I th I think it. No, no, it, not it that. Does it's just job. normal, yeah. isn't it? It's no, like, no. I, I mean, I, I'm saying I don't, I don't I I like people who say I don't care. They say oh, nice to see you. Come again. Have a nice day. It doesn't bother me. But a chat. I, I, hate, I hate people who think they're the life and soul. No, no, no. no when I you don't, go in don't for mean, a, I mean, like, like nuts. you know, if you go through a door, you hold it open, you go there, you go. You know what I mean? You yeah. expect a thank you. Yeah, that's yeah. not at all. Yeah, and also when when do you come in at uh, like a narrow walkway and you're both walking there and uh, I start, we'll get out of the way and they tut like I should have. I want to go. Hold on, look, we're both in the same boat here. Yeah. Why is it me? Uh, that that annoys me. Where people oh, think they, when they're in the wrong. They own the street or. Mm. <sighs> If, if if two people aren't looking where they're going, it's one yeah. person's fault. Yeah. That really annoys me. Yeah. yeah. So Sorry. that so that's it really. I mean, I know the twenty four hour shops and they're knackered and stuff, but politeness, just to say, well, it costs nothing, does it? No. So, so those are your little quick ones. Then we get on to your, your big three, don't we? Ones. The big ones. Yeah, Should you play you a record and come back to that? I know what you want. Oh, I'm, I'm talking to Carl Pilkins on room one hundred and one on yeah. XFM one hundred four point nine. Yeah. What is <laughs> New order. Oh, excellent. Do you know what I mean? It's mad. It's mad. We were shouting at you then. How loud are those headphones? Uh, 
Pretty loud, but I'm always wearing headphones, so... Yeah, yeah but, but look, look, look what I'm doing. This is an old radio trick. You put one earphone over your ear and the other one off so you can hear people in the Hi, room. Hi, on XFM 104.9. What, what did you want to say? Doesn't matter, Carl. It doesn't The it point really is, it could have been important. It could have been a yeah, fire you, or when, when we shout anything, you jump. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Come on, Carl. Right. Get with the programme, all right? Hey? Right, right. what other things do you want to yes, room 101? <sighs> uh, <laughs> other than us. Spiders. Right, go on. I, I know Ricky will yeah, be agreeing with yeah. this. Yeah, all, all, all spiders, yeah. Just, I mean, not all spiders, because there's some spiders that are on the planet that don't do any harm. <laughs> uh, they clean up stuff, don't they? <laughs> what? Like a little yeah, brush. Do you mean like janitor <laughs> spiders? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, uh, there's some that, you know. <laughs> Hong Kong leggy. Just, just yeah. going with stuff. But I'm talking about the spiders that are deadly. And, right. And, uh, and spiders that are massive. I mean, Johnny's mate, uh, Ricky's mate, Johnny, I mean. Yeah. He was talking about how, uh, he was in Australia. Yeah. And he was sharing a, a room with, with a mate or whatever. And his mate was having a shower. And said, uh, Johnny, just, just come in here a minute. And he, he went in. And there was a spider on the side of the bath that he said was the size of your hand. Two yeah. hands, width, it's sort of like a size of track, just like eight inches across. Um, was... That big, right? And the daft thing with that one is that that can't kill you. It's massive, it's got no purpose. Being... It's a huntsman. Yeah, but what, uh, uh, something you said it does, right? If you sort of walk around it and, it's, and it thinks you're going to try and trap it, it, it hisses at you. And jumps at you. And jumps on you. And it sort of clings on. So That's you'd be, terrifying. You'd be sort of running around trying to get it off and it's just gripping on like the old stag beetle thing yeah, again. Yeah. <laughs> it's clinging on to you. <laughs> but there is no what I don't understand is why is that spider that big? <laughs> right. Because no doubt it, it uh, only eats stuff like normal spiders do, but it needs to eat more of them because it's it's a bigger lad. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Um it doesn't it doesn't actually do anything. It's not like I just, I just don't doesn't get track, it. Doesn't doesn't paint, doesn't do yeah, it. Yeah, it's just getting in the way, and it's one of those things that <laughs> are so big, you couldn't kill it, because can you imagine, like, the mess that yeah. would make something that size if you stamped on it? Yeah. Which I'm not, you know, again, I'm not a fan of. Yeah. Um, but I, th I don't get that, and then there was a programme on a few weeks ago on BBC about spiders, and there was this one, right, it was going, you know, there's so many spiders in the world, and apparently there's so many of them, they can't give them all names. Right? What they're saying is, once one dies out, they'll actually introduce another one. Because there's so many different breeds of them, that it's impossible to sort of up make a book and list them all. Right. Well, it's it's like the book would be infinitely long. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like a queue. They they're not right. trying to name it individually, are they? No, no, no. That's their problem. No, so yeah, 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 yeah. Just, just keep it down ziggy. to the species. Go this on. Is, this is true, this. Go on, then, yeah. So, so they'll sort of go the... You know, the net gives a spider the Black Widow, right? Black Widow, they've all died. So uh, who's next? And they'll say, "Here's a red back." Yeah, and that's that's how they introduce them. So this program was going on about this. <laughs> that's right? not how they do it. No, they do do it. <laughs> okay, your point. Okay, being, right. right. So anyway, there's this little one, right, in Australia, and it shows you some kids being dead happy and playing around in the sun, loving it. You know, all healthy and that, and you know, love being in the sun. They're playing around the pool, and you know, there's a couple of them there playing swing ball and that, dead happy, not a care in the world. And, like, the one of them goes, oh, I'll go swimming. Yeah. Because I've been playing swing ball for an hour, got a bit of a sweat. Sure. Go for a little, uh, breaststroke or whatever. And, uh, they, they get in the, in the pool, and they can't wait to have a swim about. And then, it pans to the bottom of the pool. Yeah. And there's this little spider just sat there dead still. Right? Sat at the bottom of the pool holding its breath. Holding <laughs> its breath! <laughs> okay. <laughs> ah! Cheeks going up red, yeah, eyes bulging. Yeah, yeah. Oh, eight pairs of goggles on. <laughs> One goes by with a snorkel. You should have thought of this. <laughs> Four pairs of flippers. Yeah. Oh. He sat there in the deep end, right? And it's, and like, he, and then it pans back to the kids having a good time, chucking a ball to each other. Yeah. Mm. Pans, I can see what's going to happen here. <laughs> and it pans back. <laughs> it's not going to join in the game, is it? <laughs> no. And what happens is, the kid starts bouncing up and down on the floor. Sure. Goes and sticks its, uh, the kid goes and puts a foot on the spider. <sighs> Bites the kid, and apparently, if you're not seen to, you can be dead in 15 minutes. Sorry, sorry, why does this spider sit at the bottom of the pool? That's what it likes to do. <laughs> Animals don't do things they like to do. <laughs> Animals do things for a reason. Waiting for a kid to come along. <laughs> no! It doesn't make any sense. 
It doesn't make any sense. Well, it, that's that's where it's it not. Goes. It's not. It doesn't go out to murder kids. That's not. <laughs> his, that's not what it does. No, no, there must be a reason. It's to, to, I mean, if you just stopped when you watch these programs and don't get involved with the music <laughs> and like you know the odd, why does it sit at the bottom of the pool? There must be a reason. It either goes there for protection, food, to call. It does it for a reason. It doesn't go there to wind up swimmers. Yeah. There uh, must be a reason this. Is it? Uh, if anyone's watching, please, if you're watching that program, I don't know. I don't know about this spider. What? What? What's the name of the spider? I'm not sure. Okay. Well, oh say... eight seven hundred eight hundred one two three. Is it four. the Duncan Goodhue? <laughs> <laughs> is, is, is it? Is it I mean, I don't know. Maybe it does go into <laughs> other things like ponds and that, and maybe it does the same to ducks if a duck stands on it. But why? <laughs> the duck <laughs> stands on it. Uh. Why? <laughs> oh, I love your brain. Probably because it, eventually, uh, you know, a kid can get like saved if it's if it's seen to in fifteen minutes. But a duck is just going to like wander around and go, God, I don't feel well and what have you. <laughs> and it, and it, <laughs> what good is that to the spider? Because no, I'm saying it might kill it if it might protect itself. But it must be in the pond for a reason in the first place, or the swimming pool. It must be down there for a reason. It must have can it we, must have another we, agenda, evolutionary. Wise, it can't just do it. Could it be in training for the Olympics? <laughs> Unless it is just cooling, like like those because um, on on one of the other programs that that's a bit mental. Um, th oh yeah, that you, one. Yeah, the one the one with the lizards. <laughs> with the well, let's not get into lizards. This could okay, take. No, go on, quickly. no, no, this is a good one. It was it was a program, BBC program again, on how insects and animals help each other out. Yeah, right. They were saying how you know, you might think they're in an insect, but they think like humans do, yeah. and they all help each other out, <laughs> right? And there was this, this lizard that, um, is running about in the desert, <laughs> right? And it's going, God, it's roasting. And what it does, <laughs> it, it makes a little <laughs> hole in the sand, <laughs> and it goes under the ground and it cools down, right? Yeah. And then you see one of the locals, I think it was in, in Egypt or something, and the Egypt bloke comes walking along. <laughs> the Egypt yeah. bloke! And, uh... <laughs> is he walking like an Egypt bloke? <laughs> Yeah. Walk like an Egypt bloke. <laughs> and, and what oh. he does, right, he, he's looking out for these holes in the ground. Sure. And he sticks his hand in. Yeah. And he Why does he want the lizard? He, he makes shoes and stuff out of it. <laughs> okay. Right? And you see, you see him walking around, he's got about 12 of these things in a basket on his back, and they're yeah. all looking really fed up. Oh, yeah. yeah. And it's dead hot, and they can't be bothered trying to escape, and they look really fed up. And this bloke's laughing, you know, he's collecting loads. <laughs> I love how he watches this, like, because yeah. they sort of uh, editorialise it and make it into, like, some exactly. sort of, like, evil play. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, no. but, then, <laughs> but then it was saying how this deadly scorpion that man is scared of is mates with the lizard. <laughs> And the reason is that the scorpion <laughs> goes into the hole, right? It can't dig its own hole because its arms are that big and it's awkward for it to dig to dig a proper hole. Sure. So what it does, it goes into the, the, the like the little den that the lizards made, right? And um, whilst the lizards having a kip, the scorpion says, I'll "Tell you what, I'll do you a deal. You have a kip. <laughs> I'll walk up and down this hole here and, <laughs> and, and sort of scare away any people." So the lizards like, "Yeah, all right then." Fair enough, because the scorpion wants a little hole to keep out the sun. The lizard wants a kip. They've done themselves a little deal. The Egyptian bloke comes walking along, sticks his hand in the hole. Yeah. He thinks he's just going to get a lizard. Scorpion stings him. He runs off, drops the basket. All the lizards go running off. I love the fact that that is what uh, always happens. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they yeah, feel yeah. that just by <laughs> yeah, chance. Exactly. That's what always happens. I like the fact that the the Egyptian bloke. Uh, has done this every day, does it? He goes, well, okay, I've got all these lizards. Um, I'll just go to this hole again. Yeah. Because <laughs> I haven't got that lizard yet. Yeah. This would be fine. No, I just... I, I just think... And when know. the, when the lizard and the scorpion make that deal, and he says, you have a kip, yeah. and the other one does it, do they talk in Egypt, or...? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, so they talk Egypt how, do they, how do they discuss they Egypt bloke or English bloke? What language do they use, Carl? It, no, it's the, but it's the international language of love. But spi yeah. spiders is what you're putting in room 101. Spiders. Let's go back to that. That's spiders, what, so, so spiders, spiders that... So basically, spiders that have got the poison to kill a man. Because Rick, I know, because you're... Okay. But Rick, I know what you're... What about the ones that are just too big for their own good? They, well, those I are don't the... understand that either. But Rick, <laughs> but yeah. Rick you're... you're you're scared of all spiders, aren't you? Right? Yeah. Even the little tiny ones you find. I don't like any spiders, yeah. Is, is your husband afraid of them as well, or...? <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. What are we playing here? Uh, what are we playing here? Oh, this is Cat Stevens, Silent Sunlight. It's beautiful off Catch Bullet 4 at his peak in the 70s. Silent Sunlight. <laughs> oh, 
Cut Stevens, silence and light. Yep. Um, um, Carl just had a, a funny phone call, didn't you? From someone who's telling you all about the the little brown, it's called, is it? Little brown, yeah. That's the yeah. name of the spider that sits in the bottom of the pool. He said it doesn't hold its breath. <laughs> it's got uh, an air bubble. <laughs> I didn't think it did hold its breath, to be honest. Uh, and then, as you know, Steve was opening a, a letter we got. And it's a football song, and it's they don't like it up um, by the Leatherhead Gimpers. But it's just it's the fact we keep we keep getting sent <laughs> homemade singles. Uh, wow, that's good, isn't it? Oh, there's another one here. Uh, They're both football anthems, though. We don't. Well, do we show any interest in football? Are we? Well, football? well, yeah, the World Cup. We do, don't we? <laughs> You're right, Rick. Yeah, yep. I've, I've got a bet on as well. Have you? Asked uh, uh, Chelsea to win two one. What today? Yeah, mm. and I've got Chelsea to win two one, but Henri to score first, and that's that's something like. 30 to 1 or something. Best of luck. Yeah. Best luck. Cheers. Brilliant. Right, so, spiders, that's the first one in Room 101, isn't it? So you rude people in supermarkets, rude people in supermarkets, spiders that are either can- have got enough poison to kill a man or are unnecessarily big. Yeah. Yeah, go on then. Right, good. Going well. Right. Uh Next one. Yeah. Stars in their eyes. <laughs> Blimey, it's a popular show. Can't you might alienate stand a lot of people. It. Um, what, what, I, just. I think if you've got a talent, right, um, there's loads of shows now that you can go on and make a killing. Yeah. Like Pop Idol. Yeah. Uh, what was the other one? Pop Stars. Yeah. That sort of thing. So, people who will go on Stars in Their Eyes, they, they want to sort of be famous. Yeah. Um, they want to be a singer. What I don't understand is why I go on that show where you do all the hard work, got to do all the graft. Yeah. Uh, and yet, even if they win it, you never see them again. The guy who won last year, uh, Christy Berg. Ian right? Moore. Ian Moore. Before but, last. But I was now with his own stuff. Yeah, but, <laughs> right. Uh, <laughs> how did he say that sold well? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Don't well, get it. What I like is when, uh, someone doing Edith Piaf, like, wins a heat, and, uh, Matthew goes, well, I don't think you'll be going back to the, uh, cleaning job, will you? <laughs> yes, you will. Monday. <laughs> Almost certainly. Monday. She'll be back then Monday. Just yeah. Uh, and, and just the way, you know, in like the final last week where the guy who was Elvis won. And they're I all thought he there. would, though. I thought he was very good. No, he was good. Uh. But will we see him again? Do you know what I mean? <laughs> I, what, what is his job? I don't know. It, he'll be carrying on doing that. There's, there's, there's going to be no change to his life whatsoever. He's very good at what he does, but he's wasting his time on stars and eyes. <laughs> so what's- I don't understand exactly what your issue is. You, cl you clearly like the show because you watched the final last week. He thinks- he, uh, you I think, agree you think people are talented. You think it's a waste of talent to go on stars and eyes because it's not a vehicle to be famous, whereas something like- Pop Idol, yeah. Pop Stars, even yeah. Big Brother. Do you know what I mean? Go yeah. on that. Sit in a room all day, have a month off work. Because they're, they're all big stars now, aren't no, they? No, no, but what I'm saying is- it's less work to sit in the Big Brother house, now and again, just sing a song, and people go, oh, isn't he a good singer? You come out, after having a, a month's rest or whatever it is you're having there, Yeah. you come out and there's loads of record companies, like, waiting for you to come out and give you a deal. And what happens then, when and you then, get a deal, when you cut a record, what happens to that record then? Then it's either sells or it doesn't. Uh, and, and actually, what happened to it? Uh, it didn't, it didn't sell. No, none of them did. But what I'm saying is, that is a lot easier to do than to all the graft that you have to do on Stars in the Rise and the pressure. What would you rather do? Buy Craig's Christmas record? Yeah. Or, um, Ian Moore's, uh, classics? Probably Craig, just because the guy on Stars in the Rise really thought he was better than Christa Berg. When he was singing and- <laughs> I think I'm better than Christa Berg. <laughs> <laughs> no, he was singing and Christ Christa Berg came walking on. Did he cry? And he didn't stop and go, oh, I can't believe it, my big fan. He was sort of carrying on, like, don't interrupt me, I'll have a word with you in a bit. <laughs> yeah. You think he should show the man he's actually making a little bit of living off? Yeah. Emulating. A bit of respect. A bit more respect. And the most annoying thing... I imagine them arguing, resting each other's floor, saying, I'm Christa Berg. No, I'm Christa Berg. Like two ventriloquist dummies. Mm. Just having a fight in the dressing room afterwards. Yeah. But the, the most annoying thing of all with stars in their eyes, people who go on... And do people like, um, say like, I think, I think last, <laughs> last year, someone went on and did Le Mal. <laughs> <laughs> now, if you wanna, cause the, the whole idea is with Stars in the Rise, you get work off the back of that show by, like, companies, don't you, saying, yeah. let who will we book. Yeah. You could get the real Le Mal for about 30 quid. <laughs> 
imitate. Ah. So why, why have an imitator? <laughs> well, it seems to me, though, Carl, the problem is that show's been running so long that all the big names have already been done, so it's gonna end up having to be, isn't it, Lamal or some yeah. old kind of 50s singer you've never heard of? Isn't that the problem? I remember when- I mean, uh, it's just an- it's just a- Eddie just Reader a, was yeah, on there, yeah, there was yeah. a movie by Eddie Reader. But it's uh, just a karaoke contest. It's just- it, I yeah. don't think- I think you're assuming that everyone on there wants to get, uh, yeah, you know, a recording they do, contract. They do, Steve. Okay. In, in that bit at the back where they say, uh, and the votes are coming in, let's have a look at the tension now that's going on. And they sat there and they really think they are Elvis. <laughs> and they are Luther Vandross. <laughs> Sat there and like, <laughs> if, if they were all sat there having Woke a Woke up this morning, looked at your picture just to get me started. <laughs> Filth. If they were all sat there, sort of thinking, oh god, this is a bit of a laugh, isn't it? But they're not, you can see that they all really want it. And it's like. But so what I'm saying is, who are you putting in room 101? Are you putting in the people who are just there to have a bit ev of fun? Everyone involved in that show. Including <laughs> Kelly? Yeah. He's a talented guy. You yeah. don't care. No, he's, he's going in he's as well. in there first, and then everyone else, everyone who enters it, the people who go and sit in the audience, everything. But it what would you do Saturday night? You'd love the show, you'd watch it every no, week. I, it was just on when I was getting ready to go out, and there's nothing else on at that time. Sure. And it was the final on Saturday night as well. Yeah, you've got to watch the final, you know, the final. Really, the final. Yeah. Well, who would you do if you went on the show? <laughs> Moby. I'd probably do... Ooh. It's not, it's not that you look like them though, is it? No, no, you no, saying no, like no. They wouldn't let me on as Tracy Chapman. I was furious. That's annoying. Because I sound just like her, but they said... Yeah. No. Bowie. Bowie. You do Bowie? Yeah. Can I hear your impression? No. Nope. Well, come on. No, no, because you just said if you could go on and, and what have you, I'm, I'm saying that. Well, it's got to be someone you can do. I mean, obviously I'd go on as Will Smith because I can do the rapping. Yeah. I, I can't, I can't do it. I'm not a good singer. I've never, never really been into singing. I've never done a live singing thing before. Haven't you? No. Not but if you, if there was a talent, if there was a talent show, if there was a talent show on. What did you do? I did walk like an Egyptian by the bangles and I mimed, dressed up as a woman. <laughs> Uh, it was when I was still going to school, so it was like. Well, I hope so. Twelve. And what? Sorry, what was the? What? Why did you do that? What did you mime to? And why were you dressed as a woman? <laughs> Where's the logic in this? Is what I'm saying, Carl. What? What sort um, of act was this? I was think, it? I think I was meant to get old of some like Egyptian outfit. <laughs> Couldn't. <laughs> so I looked in my mum's wardrobe and I had a dress. Dress, got, dress and affairs, carrying some lizards. That'd do it, wouldn't it? I had some boots and a wig on. <laughs> and how did you dance? <laughs> Look, he looks confused! He's confused suddenly by his own act. He's suddenly confused! The best bit was, I also, it was like a, a proper talent show, do you know where you cover it all? Yeah. So I did like the dancing and the miming, and then I also did a bit of magic, right, <laughs> where I had like a cloth, <laughs> right, and, and I had it over my hand like that, and, and the crowd were like, oh god, what's he gonna do? <laughs> 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 Oh, of course they were. Go on, and what did they, and what was the and trick? They were playing that! <laughs> and the crowd going, oh, what, what's the great <laughs> That's pil one chorus. Ooh, what's, Ooh, what's he gonna what's, do? Oh, what's the great Pilconi <laughs> gonna do? So, oh. so, so what I did was, <laughs> I was stood there teasing them, and, um, Teasing the audience? Yeah. Yeah. And I pulled the, I said, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make a, a bird appear before your very eyes. <laughs> okay. And I pulled the, the tea towel off, and I just had hold of an egg. And I said, oh, it isn't born yet. <laughs> they loved it. Did He's they? so they proud it. of that! Look at his face! Did you come up with that yourself? Yeah. Did you have any help at all? <gasps> no, no. Was, so, oh, you did oh, walk like an Egyptian and dress as a woman, then you did the egg trick. And yeah. Then, and then I was also playing like a, a janitor. Because when the next person was singing, <laughs> I'd come on and all the electric went off. And uh, I came on going, oh, God, has anyone got 50p for the meter? Oh, you're quite a little show, showman, weren't you? And then like, you know, the did you win? Chucked, chucked to some money. Yeah. And, uh, Are you sure you weren't actually employed as the janitor? <laughs> <laughs> no, did you win? No, I think we came second. Some this this really tarty girl who did Madonna, like a virgin. And I thought, yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> like you are. She's a right ropey little woman. <laughs> But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so great! <laughs> oh, oh, okay, brilliant. so Spider Stars and the Rise, we better play a, a track, hadn't we? Oh, indeed, yeah. Bit of Tom McRae, this was a track we played a while back, I enjoyed it. <laughs> <laughs> Tom McRae, End of the World News. Yeah, I love that one, I hope you're enjoying the music, we're loving it, aren't we? Indeed. Still to come, we've got uh, another entry to Room 101, Carl's final entry, and then that um, giveaway, the famous giveaway with, uh, Enhance Carl's Life. Can I have some adverts though first, Carl, because I'm oh, getting a little fed up with adverts for a little while. <laughs> Badly drawn boy, once around the block. Classic, a retro cut. Getting a bit sad now, Steve. Twenty minutes. Indeed. 
Right. It's got, I've got so much to say. I've got so much to leave people with about Carl, about all the things he's he's done. Looking back, Carl, do you remember when I put up the waste paper bin on your head? <laughs> oh, classic. Classic yeah. time, yeah. Yeah, do you remember that? What did I do to you today? Well, you tried to bring the same memories flooding back to me by putting the same grotty bin on my head. But the annoying thing was, <laughs> last time we did it, it was quite a new bin. Yeah. Did it today, it's rank, all yeah. sorts of stuff on what it. What else did I do when I saw you go around the corner down there? <laughs> go on. I went, I went to get the paperwork and that, like, you need to produce the show. Yeah. And, uh, came around the corner, Ricky was sort of hiding, and I was concentrating, reading <laughs> stuff and he goes <laughs> I don't imagine it was as soft and gentle as that I imagine it was more like <laughs> exactly like that and he I tell you what I nearly exploded because he's not hot on one leg right <laughs> and the, it was <laughs> He sort of, uh, I don't know why I'm doing this, but he sort of was walking like that and all, we're looking down, and I went, ah, eh, and he hopped like that, and then, wait, he's like, ah, 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 ah. Uh, rest oh. assured, listeners, that if you were here, it's not any funnier than it is if you were listening at home. It's only amusing to Ricky. <laughs> oh! What, it, it makes you feel really refreshed. <laughs> what he, a, he was going on and having a heart attack like that. And I was, I was nearly having a heart attack laughing. And he went, I feel good now. He said, I can see why people skydive. <laughs> 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 he said, that'll be good for people that were ill. Oh, Jeez. Carl. They, oh. They, they've made me feel fresh. How am I gonna, how am I gonna live without Carl for 14 weeks? Oh, you'll find other people to irritate. <sighs> oh, dear. Okay, so, uh, right, well, um, we got this, this final entry in Room 101, but... We've also um, had m uh, so many emails and letters about this competition. People trying to bribe you with things. They've been great. Can you read a few of more? Absolutely. Yeah. Well, obviously, this is uh, people trying to win this uh, bag that we got signed at the Baftas. We got Graham Norton, Angus Dayton, Alan Davis, Jamie Theakston, Paul Whitehouse, Baxendale, Helen, Steve Filmich, and McFadden, Peter Davis, and Simon Pegg, Steve, all different people signing the big bag. Do you know what I think though? Go I on. don't think people want that. I think they want to contribute to Carl's existence. Well, this is. I what really genuinely think that Carl was sort of. You've. you've, you've you know, you've only won there. How long have we been doing this now with you? Sort of like, you know, in the area, three months. Yeah. I think months. you've, I think you've touched people's lives, Carl. I don't think I've ever met. Well, I haven't met you, but this, it, I think your soul comes across as like a cross between. I'd put it as like a cross between a cat and yeah. Rain Man. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, but uh, we've had quite a few, which are. Uh, uh, sort of, which obviously want to kind of further your education. Obviously, when we're off air, this is something we, we're we're worried that's just going to dry up, you know. And, and we've tried hard to educate you. So, lots of books, lots of people suggesting books. Um, the Giant Book of Mysteries. And mm -hmm. I mean, if you chose this one, Carl, it uh, tells you um, how three thousand Japanese soldiers literally vanished overnight. Real life accounts Ooh. of vampires. Uh, the man who planned his own crucifixion. Oh, the famous Carl. Ghostbuster Harry Price. Oh. Um, and oh. lots of uh, things it, about spontaneous combustion. Is this the, the one about the woman with the hairball? That's not got the woman with the hairball in there. I'll have to dig that one out these, for you. These sort of books are the thing that I'm after. This is what well, interesting I've, I've, is. I've brought in one as well. It's a, it's a, a friend who works with um, Jane, my girlfriend, called Liz, and she wants to put this forward. And this is trade secrets, everything you will ever need to know about everything. And it's just like little tips. You know mm. what I mean? But there's so many things competing with that. You see, there's another guy you sent in. He wants to give you uh, a video entitled "Making Love Parts One and Two: An Instructional Guide." I mm. imagine you'd enjoy that, Carl. No. No. Nothing they can teach you. <laughs> nah. Sure. Uh, the Reader's Digest book of strange stories and amazing facts, again, other stuff here. Why cats have nine lives, Carl? Well, hang on a minute. Why meteors are likely to destroy Earth in the next hundred years? You're wasting your time. Okay. In this In this trade secrets book, yep. listen to this for a tip. Make a necklace from electrical wire. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good idea. But don't plug it in. What about- <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't say that. <laughs> what about this then, Carl? Because <laughs> oh. obviously we're concerned that you didn't get your GCSEs or you didn't get as many as you'd have hoped. There's yeah. a guy here. This is Victoria, and she's saying she's more than willing to give you all of her awards and certificates. She's got six GCSEs, six A's, and four. She's got many GCSEs. In fact, six A's, four B's, three A levels and a master's degree in philosophy. She's willing to give you those certificates. She says you will be the proud owner of qualifications. As the owner of qualifications, she has found that anything she says is invariably believed and that she's popular and very happy. 
She's willing that. to give you those qualifications. That's pretty impressive. You can claim they're your own. You have to change your name to Victoria, but other than that, I can see no problems. And it's you have to put a dress on yeah. and a fez. It's nice. <laughs> More like an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> but you see, there's lots of educational ones. Then there's other things which are perhaps less useful to you. Um, this is, uh, doesn't, doesn't say who it's from, but, uh, I think it's Ruth, and she's happy to give you a statue of an ostrich that she made when she was seven. What about that? All right, you love birds, you love animals. Yeah, um, apparently it's still a statue. Apparently, the legs fell off under the weight of the body, <laughs> so now it's just a legless ostrich. But even so, yeah, even so, I've only got a small flat. Mm. Sure, another woman here. She, uh, this I is doubt if it's ostrich size. Yeah, it's it's just clogging up space, though, isn't it? This okay. is Lauren. She's willing to give you some of her handmade blue tack animals. She makes animals out of blue tack. She can give you an elephant, a seahorse, a tortoise, a pig, a butterfly, fish, snail, even a stegosaurus, or anything you choose. See, I've got I've got my art set on. You've got on, the books. You're excited by the books. Book. What about this, though? This is a Lego alarm clock with a little Lego man who's got a variety of hats. It says here, including biker's helmet and cap. Two, I think, of the village people. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, uh, Carl, if, again, people are picking certain things up. A clear stiletto mobile phone holder with pink fur on it flashes pink and green. I, I think people know that you are not okay. listening. In this book, okay. listen, right? In this book, little tips and stuff. It's one here about if your dog keeps nicking a remote control. Sure. The way to get it off it, ring the doorbell. Right, so you've got to get off your chair. <laughs> Go and ring the doorbell, <laughs> so the dog goes, what's that? And it, dro <laughs> it, it, jo it drops the remote control, goes running to the door, yeah. you, you run back and pick it up. I love the idea of Carl doing that. And then the doorbell goes, and Carl drops it and goes, and it's the dog pressing the doorbell, <laughs> yeah, yeah. and it sits back down, and Carl going, oh, no, not again. <laughs> I, I mean, I really do want, can't I just have this? You excited by that, are you? It's brilliant. What about this one, though, that you mentioned? This is, uh... A book which has got all those um, urban legends and stories that you've read on the internet, and it tells you whether they're real or not. This has got the one in there. I know you're very excited about the one with the woman who stuck her head in the microwave. Yeah. Eh? Hey? All right. It's not all right. So basically, she's saying here that whenever Ricky says, "Oh, it's not true," you can dispute dispute that with your your book. Yeah. yeah. What do you think then, Carl? Do I have a think about all these gifts? There's and then so much stuff, back? isn't there? Do you play a record and then come back? <sighs> Can't have you found something you like in there? You're so undecided, Carl. I really like this book. Go on, and what is it? What have you else you found? What tip? Uh, God, there's loads of stuff in there. Yeah. Um, let's just let's just pick one at random. Don't be too tidy. Leave some areas for hopeful, helpful garden animals to hide in. So when you're cleaning your garden and that, you know, it might look a bit of a mess, but think about the, the animals that are walking about at night in the uh -huh. dark and stuff. Yeah. Just little things you don't think about. Yeah, because they're pointless. Little, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, then, we'll just play a record. Oh, there's so many to decide on. Yeah. Alright, what are we playing, Steve? This is something, um, from a little compilation that came free with a magazine called Comes With A Smile. It's a good little magazine. And this is, a b uh, by Matt Pond, PA. It's called Night's End. It's not... I suppose there's a little bit of New Country, which we don't play often, but, uh, there's some nice tracks no, floating that's about. Nice. And that's, uh, Matt nice. Pond, PA, Night's well, End. Well, I'm getting very... Sad now. Ten minutes to go, mm -hmm. and so much to cry. Now, thing is, Carl's fallen in love with that book, but I feel a bit bad letting a friend sort of win when all these lovely people, these regular listeners. So I don't think you can have it. But I'll tell you uh, what, I'll get. I'll, no, no, I'll borrow that or I'll buy it for you, so you can have that anyway. What? What? Have That's you found safe. In there? You're going yeah, home uh, with that. What? Know, have you avoid washing up by boiling the bag food. <laughs> <laughs> see, yeah. I could see why you'd love that. <laughs> exactly. Is there anything out? What, uh, uh, what? What other things have you caught your eye though? Put that uh, book down. Yeah, uh, go on. Go on. Um, well, well... one of our regular listeners who actually wants the bag and wants to be part of your life, come right. on. Well, Richard emailed in, right? And yeah. he's got a book, which is similar to the one I like there. Yeah. Which has got, like, 180 stories in it. Um, so, I mean, most of them are, like, true, I think. Do you know, do you know I was telling you that story about the woman who put her, her head in the oven <laughs> to, to dry, to dry her hair? Yeah. Because she liked the way... And she boiled her brain. Yeah, she stuck it in a microwave. Avo avoid washing your hair by boiling the brain bags. <laughs> so she put her head in a microwave? Yeah. And boiled her brains? Yeah. And boiled her brains. Because sure. she thought she'd get the same result as she did from the oven, but it all went wrong and that. And what do you mean? She used to dry hair in the oven? And she just, like, went modern? Apparently, it's like what punks used to do. You can get, you get a different sort of heat off an oven than you do off a hairdryer, right? Sure. So, um, she thought, well, I'll do it in half the time, use a microwave. Sure. She... Busy, she was busy, I she was I don't understand late. how you can get your head in a microwave. It only works when the door closes. Yeah, but you jam the little thing, don't you? Well, don't say that. Don't say that. Don't tell- I don't think it's possible, but don't- Of course it is. Yeah, well, well don't anyway, but do he's, he remembers that story and said, I've got a book full of stuff like that. And, um, he sort of sums up a little story that's- that's in the book about this girl who, uh, she had long hair, right? 
and uh, she used to always mess around with it, and um, she's sucking on it. Do you know like how girls girls do with the, with the long hair? They sort of yep, mess yep. around with it and stuff. Yeah, and she's sucking on it all the time. And she was doing this from the age of like ten, mm. and then I don't know. She's probably about thirty odd, and uh, she's doing this all the time. Guessing, and uh, she goes, "Oh God, my belly's hurting today, mum." And she goes, oh, what's wrong with you? She says, I don't know. You're 30. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> so she goes to the doctors, and the doctors do an x-ray, and nothing's coming up, and it's like, I don't know what's wrong with you, you know, you're just being a bit moany about nothing. <laughs> She's like, no, honestly. <laughs> He's a very intolerant doctor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. She said, this is- Piss this off. <laughs> <laughs> this is, this uh. is really hurting, I don't know what's up with it. So anyway, they, they found out some sort of system of, uh, looking at what, what was going on. Yeah. And X-rays. No, it wasn't X-ray because X-ray didn't show it up. Okay, it was something else. So uh, anyway, it's only gone and turned into like she's been sucking her hair for so many years sure. that little bits had come off. Sure. She's got a giant air ball in her belly. Wow! Right, yeah. which was like huge, the size of a rat or something like that. Right, the size of a. <laughs> it's like so that. interesting what he chose. Yeah. The no, size right. of a rat. No, no, no. Well, the funny thing is when when they eventually got it out, yeah, the, the mum. Was like, you know, oh god, it was terrible, and that's what she actually said it looked like a dead rat. Oh, right. And it was in her belly, and that's like what was causing all the pain. Sure. And apparently, your your belly acids don't um uh. don't don't kill hairs because they're so fine it can't handle it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, right. I so reckon, you go for that book, Aya. Yeah? Who's yeah. the winner then? Who's the winner of the the lovely BAFTA What's bag? His name there? Richard Scholar, is it or something? Yeah, Richard. Uh, yeah, Scholar or Scowler yeah. or something. Else. So he's the winner. So check it out. You're going to get that book coming to you. I'll get. I'll borrow this book but, for but you. I need oh. an email within like five working days to sort of. So what's your email? It's carl dot pilkington at yeah. xfm dot co uk okay lovely i want an email from this guy uh, and i won't be sending the bag out until i receive the goods okay <laughs> very good enough. well we've only got a few minutes i want to play suede and i want to end with the smith track so let's let's play this what is it suede stay together lovely track <laughs> my favorite tr suede track of all time there well we're, we're we're oh that's nearly it carl right what's your last room 101 Oh God! It was uh, holidays. Holidays. Well, you want to put holidays in room one one? People. They were sort of annoying on holiday. Oh yeah. Do you know when you go away? Oh yeah. It sort of touched on this before. Is it? Is this going to be the Scouse guy? Yeah. Go on. Oh, it's so long now. I mean, it was holiday when we went to Tunisia. <laughs> and the scouts have pissed you off. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But the annoying thing was, you know, when you go on, on, uh, it was a cheap holiday and, like, the lesson here is, you know, if you want a good holiday, you gotta, like, spend some money. Yeah. And we didn't on this one. We spent about, I don't know, 400 quid for two of us for, like, a month or something ridiculous. And we got there and, you know, you, you get to the hotel and you go, we have made a mistake. <laughs> you know, it's a ropey hotel. Um... You know, you can tell, like, that the blinds and stuff, as you walk in, they're all dirty and stuff, you think, well, let's make the most of it, you know, let's not, let's not get down about it, it's, it's a holiday, it's sure. for a rest. And <laughs> you try and make the most of it, and we had to meet, you know, like, you have one of those things where you get to your destination and the rep says, right, you know, go and unpack your bags and that, go and sort yourself out in the room, and, uh, tomorrow morning we'll meet up at ten o'clock. And I'll go through, you know, the the best sort of place to go for camel rides and, uh, you know, the best <coughs> deals I can get you. That sort of thing. Can anyone here walk like an Egyptian? <laughs> so, <laughs> so, <laughs> so, she says, uh, right, tomorrow morning, meet 10 o'clock in the discotheque. So, we get up and we have breakfast and it wasn't a good breakfast. Uh, the kitchen was, like, a bit, bit horrible. The food wasn't good. And it was run by sort of midgets. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean it was run? There Not there's anything wrong with that. There was little fellas running around, and the annoying thing was, one of them sort of started to fancy my girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> But How did he manifest his, his affection no, for No, you're not saying there's anything wrong with midgets, though, are you? are just no, saying no, it was no, strange that there was Yeah, but even midgets shouldn't be cutting on, on Carl Ferguson's <laughs> territory. No, I know, I know, no. But it's also that thing of, the, you know, they've got little fingers, and... I and it's oh sort of God, I'm so sorry. No, 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 I'm not. Th it's, it is a bit of a phobia of mine. Okay. Do you know what I mean? They are nice people and that. Sure. Um, oh, God. But the annoying thing is... So what was he doing then? How did he... I don't understand how he was chatting up your girlfriend. Was he crawling under the table so you couldn't see? <laughs> he just kept... <laughs> whispering, <laughs> whispering to her from underneath there. <laughs> Stop it! Just saying, you know, Wait, I don't want to get a complaint on our last show. Oh, There's not many oh, midgets. What's going to happen? Can oh. we just finish this and start up again in a couple of months? 
Oh, yeah. So if you want to more, know more about the midget theme <laughs> restaurants, <laughs> then <laughs> <laughs> just, we'll talk you in we'll talk you <laughs> three months. Yeah. It's just... Oh. Uh, it's just no, that's nice. fair enough, actually. Oh, no, yeah, no, right, sorry Carl. about that's this. Your Listen, um, uh, we'll see you in about a really, um, it's been a pleasure, truly, and thank you for I've everyone that wrote I've got you, I've got letters. Presents. Have you really? Hey, I've got you both a present, right? Oh. I've got Ricky, um, do you know how, like, we've done fables and yeah. stuff? Right? Yeah. This is like Mr. Ben. Oh. This is brilliant. Yeah. Right? And it's like little fables that Mr. Ben goes on. Oh, fantastic. So <laughs> I want you to t learn something from that for when you come back. Okay, brilliant. That's I'll, lovely, I'll tell Carl. one of the stories I read this morning. It's brilliant. In it's fact, <laughs> when you've done with it, yeah. give it me. Yeah. Because I, I haven't finished reading that. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Carl. And for Steve, <laughs> a little, uh, Oh, chat up lines, a little book of chat up lines. That's fantastic. That's great, Carl. Thank. Um, well, we're we'll see you um, in three months. But currently, man and Carl cherish Carl Pilkington. He sits in a little room by himself. So keep him in touch, and we'll see you in um, August. I'm, uh, we're going to leave you with some of that um, we all, we all love. This is uh, there is a light that never goes out by the Smiths. Very apt, I think. Goodbye. See, see you later. <laughs> That's feeder and come back around. It's a new leaf, Steve. I've, I'm oh. gonna do, do, do properly now. I'm not gonna be slovenly. I'm sitting up straight, you see. Yep. And it's gonna be a proper DJing because I think coming up soon some great tracks, including a new one from Abs and an old one from Snow. <laughs> Informer, <laughs> you know me, Dennis. Don't me a kaboom, a licky boom boom down. I'm joking, of course. We've got some fantastic tracks, some stuff, great yeah. chat, and we've got Carl That's with me, great Steve. Chat. Steve, I'm Ricky Gervais on XFM 104.9. There he is indeed with him, Steve Merchant and uh, Carl Pilkinson, of course. Say hello, Carl. All right. Yeah, nice. And, uh, you, you say you read- The on. beginning of a radio show is very much your wares, your shop window, laying out your stall. I don't think you could choose a better track than The Only Ones, Another Girl on Another Planet. I'd love to hear it. Another planet. One of my favourite intros, that. Amazing. Oh, that was dangerous, cos I once heard on Capital Radio, um, this has got to be the greatest rock intro of all time. And they played Money for Nothing by Dire Straits. Brilliant. Yeah, yeah, I can just imagine him putting their head down. I remember a friend of mine at, uh, when I was at school, he, he just bought a car and he took me outside to show off the stereo system, money for nothing. Just to, just <laughs> really? to, he just played that, I've never heard the song before, just played that for its entire four or five minute duration. It is a to good show song the, for uh, the sound system. Yeah, it's a good song for showing off intros <laughs> and sound <laughs> yeah, systems. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. You said you were driving along earlier, you saw someone, uh... Are you, are you, uh, yeah, like, yeah, it was a, one of those zooped up sort of, um, uh, sporty saloons. Nice. You know, the big, like a Mondale or something, one of those big, and, uh, it was blaring out, and the bloke in it was sort of like, I could tell he was 24, but already going bald. <laughs> Yeah. For, from, like, obviously his estate agency job to not do <laughs> yeah, yeah. But he's made a bit of money and he's got- and the service was ridiculous. Yeah. I mean, so loud and it was going through Covent Garden. He was playing Snow in Forma. <laughs> oh! I just, do people remember Informer by Snow? It was a big tune in my I don't know. It's, it's great. Yeah, I, I always enjoy can it. Can I bring that in next week? Can we play no. Snow next week? Well, you can play a tiny little bit tiny of little bit of Snow. Yeah. Do you remember Snow, Carl? Yeah, yeah, you loved it. it. Yeah, big tune. Yeah. 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 Loved it. Oh, yeah. did you? Big tune from yeah. the 90s. It's happy song, isn't it? Rick, you were yeah. saying that you've turned over a new leaf. Yeah. Yeah. Is that in all aspects of your life, or is that just in your broadcasting career? Because uh, the reason I bring that up is because, do you want to describe what you were eating just now when we came in? Because well, you're a forty, you're a forty-year-old man. You put listen, on a little bit of weight, so presumably yeah. you're watching what you eat. Well, no, but it sounded exotic. I went Can into I, a cafe and, and I didn't. I, they didn't have a cheese sandwich. Right. And I. Can I describe what it looked like to me? <laughs> right, it looked to me like a big slab of cheese. You've just got them to just <laughs> cut off a big block of cheese, <laughs> like the size of a CD case. <laughs> Or yeah. th one of those double albums, <laughs> right, of yeah. cheese, right? And just lightly <laughs> melt that for me so yeah. it drips over my hand and it yeah. gets really greasy in the bag. But yeah. just lay some strips of bacon on the top. Yeah, but listen, you've embarrassed Is that yourself. What it was? No, it's a croque monsieur, so it's French. It's a what? A croque monsieur. A croque monsieur. Yeah, and so I got, I, I thought, I've Ooh. never heard of a croque monsieur. You're having a, see, you've embarrassed yourself. Is that how it's pronounced? Or yeah. is it croque monsieur? Oh! Hey? <laughs> hey? Eh? Eh? You not... didn't expect me to be bringing out the French. <laughs> Hey, <laughs> tu aimes la musique pop? Oui, je t'aime la musique pop. La plume de ma tante. Où est le syndicat d'initiative? That means my aunt's pen. So what was it then? A croc? It was a croc. Yeah, and it, and it was just too greasy. It yeah. was just too, and it was all wobbly. I, 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 well, I like toast. I like it to be crisp. Sure. It's the thing with like, what? Uh, this is rubbish. Play Coldplay. <laughs> Out the pack. Yeah. Coldplay. It's alright, isn't it? Yeah, it's not bad, yeah. yeah. Not bad. Nice, not, nice little track. Yeah. Well, Steve, um, we've been away now for what, 12, 13, 14 weeks? Is that really? Yeah. Why? Wow. I've been looking forward to coming back. It's great, it's great to be back. <laughs> yep, yep. And, uh, 
Yeah, it's we've had uh, some 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 laughs, some tears in the in the interim. <laughs> I imagine. Yeah, uh, we've had a few ups and downs. Obviously, been working on uh, the TV show, The Office, BAFTA winning, <laughs> uh, coming soon, BBC <laughs> Two. But uh, uh, Rick, 30, I just, mean, 30, I, I just need to mention something quickly to you. Um, Go on. Wh when did I last see you? I saw you yesterday, didn't I? Yeah. Um, because we went up to Edinburgh yesterday. We were we were very nicely uh, invited to go and talk at the uh, Edinburgh International Television Festival. It was yeah. quite a big deal. We went up there and we were interviewed. And uh, Ricky chose to go on the train because it takes like four hours. Is it four and a half hours or something on the train? Yeah. But it's quite leisurely. It's quite sort yeah. of gentlemanly thing to do. Yeah. I opted to go for the plane option yeah. and fly up there. More modern. Exactly. And uh, and they they bankrolled that. They paid for it all. And yeah. so that was all not very nice. And, and as I recall, when I last saw you, uh, we got a cab, didn't we? And, and you asked if you could get the cab to drop you off at the train station. Yeah. And then it took me on to the airport. Yeah. Um, did I? Now that was that was before. I, the last time I saw you was before I got to the airport and missed my flight, wasn't it? Because really? I because I had to drop you off That's in the centre of town. Yeah. No, that that was so that was just before I had to pay a hundred and sixty five pounds to upgrade to another How ticket. How did you not tell me that in the last hour? A hundred and sixty five pounds, Ricky. I had to pay because we dropped you off at the train station. So I mean, do you want to go halves on that, or what do you want? How do you want to deal with that? How do you want to sort that whole that whole mess out? Why were you late? Why, why was I late? Because yeah. we dropped you off in the centre of Edinburgh, and yeah, you know how hard it is to get out of Edinburgh in rush hour traffic. But it was only it was only three minutes away, so you no, missed it anyway. No, because if we'd gone the other direction, it would've been twenty minutes. It took me like an hour to get to the tr to the airport, and I got there, and the plane had already left, <laughs> and the cabbie was just laughing. He was saying, we're never gonna make it. He goes, you were a religious man, you better start praying. I thought he was being facetious. He was absolutely right. A hundred and sixty-five pounds. But hold on, why didn't he tell you that when he, when, when he picked up a well, quarter past four? It makes you wonder. So obviously, li I'm a little bit annoyed. Cause you know I'm not a man who likes to sort of spend unnecessarily. But wait, but well, this is not my fault. Cause you were there when we made that decision. I didn't impose this on you. We both decided that might be. It's both our fault. I mean, it's no no one's fault. It's both our fault. Is that fair? That's all I wanted to hear. It's both our fault. Therefore, it's both our financial obligation. No. Hundred sixty-five pounds. Just split that in half. <laughs> write a check, Rick. Write a check. It's fine. I'll <laughs> yeah. I trust you. <laughs> you know. Um, phone in. Uh, I think everyone. This. This You're is. You're clearly obvious. irresponsible. No, of course I'm not. If you if you share a cab and then one person's lucky enough to not be late and one person is unlucky enough and that's what it is. Bad luck. I don't think you share the obligation. But the phone, it's, just, a it's a moral dilemma. With this isn't it? But it's more than that, though, isn't Go it? On, because what? let's be honest. What? Um, even if you had known that it, I was gonna get there late. You'd have wanted me to hang around just so you weren't left around waiting for a train on no, the cause I got Cause there. you get bored sitting no, there. So there. you'd have wanted me to at least got in that car. I got there you. way too early. I right. actually got there about I was there about thirty minutes. Oh, so early. you made it fine then. That was well, that exactly. Was so I mean, I did. I I, I sacrificed <laughs> me hanging around for half an hour so you could get it at quarter past four. And the other thing is this: you were gonna get it at quarter past four anyway. Yeah, but, but I would- if I'd gone the other direction and not dropped you off in the centre, I would have been there in well, time. Well, would we? Would we? Well, Is that yes. true? Well, only God knows. Well, and the cabbie. <laughs> 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 what I mentioned it to. <laughs> so. Uh, I'll tell you what'll cheer you up. I'll tell you what's better than 80 quid. I'll tell you what's better than shall I? <laughs> Go on. Uh, music. What, are you paying the whole 165? <laughs> Listen, look, I've brought in a little track here, um, right. Bruce Springsteen off the Tunnel Love album, and uh, I know you're a Springsteen fan. I'm a Springsteen we're, fan. We're, we should just qualify this because a lot of yeah. people who listen to XFM are obviously a bit edgy about Springsteen. They yeah. just think he's this old kind of ludicrous '80s rocker, the bandana, you know, the, the fly in the flag, which he no, never that, really was. No, that was Bon Jovi. Exactly. Don't, you don't confuse them. Bon Jovi. But seriously, no, do you know what I mean? He did write some great music in the '70s, yeah. and he just got a little bit kind of pompous in the '80s, but he still turned out uh, some amazing tunes. One of which I imagine is this one, Rick. This one's called Brilliant Disguise. Bit of Springsteen there, brilliant disguise on XFM 104.9. I think that's that soothed you a little bit. That's uh, that's not really taking the blood off. I, I, I just remember something. Eighty as quid, well. Rick. Eighty quid. You know what? Uh, um, we finished the talk at about sort of three, and we had a couple of hours to kill before we got the uh, about that half two, wasn't it? We had a couple of hours before we got the the taxi, and uh, and we were eating in this cafe, and. Uh, uh, and Steve said, how long's your train journey? I said, oh, four and a half hours. He went, so you, uh, what was I get? I said, oh, I'm getting about ten. He went, half six, me. Uh, and he's quite smug. And I went, yeah, I said, it is it quite a long time. I just started to sort of relax and over there. He went, yeah, I said, but, he said, I think i am come off better here. Cause usually, you've organised all this stuff. He said, but I think you've chosen wrong here. I think, oh, I said, I think you're right. <laughs> Yeah. You? Don't you, you think those words were <laughs> coming back to haunt me as I was <laughs> handing over 165 <laughs> notes? I was, all I was thinking was, and Ricky's I was on the gonna train be loving in it. first class, drinking uh, John Smith's yeah. and listening to 
walked. Mercedes walked yeah, But I handed over my initial card. <laughs> she said 165 quid, and I went, fine, I handed over the card. Uh, yeah. it was a Switch card. She said, we don't take Switch. Don't they? I was thinking, how, what am I gonna do then? I don't know what I'm gonna do. I don't know where I'm gonna get the money from. What did you do in the end then? Well, Cause luckily cause I had another card. Oh, right. And, um, and she managed to accept that one. But I, I don't know what I'd have done. I don't, genuinely you don't know what You didn't tell me you had another card. <laughs> yeah, I got two cards. Have you? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, oh, that um, is different. I was so depressed, because I just kept thinking about what I'd said to you. <laughs> <laughs> I've won this time. Because normally I'm always, like, legging it for tubes, or I'm just, do you know, where I get stuck in the rain, or and something. I've I just organised a driver or something. something. Because when you get me a I said, why? It's up to you. It's up to you. You know what I mean? Every man for themselves. But this time it was four and a half hours and I was just in that forty minutes on the tr on the plane, there'd have been no problem. Yeah. yeah. Unbelievable. <laughs> I'm so livid. Do you know I got off the because I was not very well either. I'm a bit ill at the moment. I got off the, the plane and I thought, well, I could get a cab from the airport all the way back home, but you know, I've already been stung for 165 quid. Got the tube. Took me forever. Really? I'm not gonna lie to you, it took me forever. Oh, so I got I got in probably later than you did. <laughs> <laughs> around the 11 o'clock mark. You didn't really? No, I wasn't quite as bad oh. as that. But I was so depressed. I'm really depressed, Rick. So I was saying 50 quid is well, me money, right I mean, Steve does not like to waste money. And um, I mean, by that, I mean, I mean. I don't like to spend money. No. Um, we had to, he had to go out and get our shirt for a photo shoot. Not a quite an important photo shoot for, I think, the, the Times. Right? Went out, he was buying a shirt, buying a shirt, went out, planned it, right short. Came back, four nine, fourteen ninety nine from Henny's. Henny's, fourteen ninety nine. He knew where he was aiming. He aimed straight for Henny's. He knew, he knew where he can get a bargain. Uh, this is a man. But I, it seems to me that at that kind of price, you can throw them away, Av. You don't even need to wash them, really. You can throw them away using, like, Kleenex. Have you ever thrown one away? No. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> Just scrape off the stains and keep on wearing it, Rick. Remember that time when we went to the casino for my birthday, and I was, like, hundred quid down, and some people were hundred quid up, and hundred quid down, uh, he, after the three hours we were there, was down twenty pounds, genuinely depressed. I was almost crying. Yeah. Because I don't- well, it's because it's a- it's a mugs game gambling. <laughs> <laughs> it really is. <laughs> was that where we- because I went there, it was, uh, when it was one time we went there, it was, uh, our agent's Oh, that was day. another time we went yeah. there, right? And he was up. And he'd, he'd got a, uh, he got a win, he was 30 quid up. And so I said, it's your round then. <laughs> and the round was more than 30 quid. And he couldn't believe it. And he sat down and he went, I can't believe it. He said, and I bought him a present, so I was already down. Yeah. <laughs> I was. I turned out I was already down because I bought our agent a gift. He didn't, I didn't see him buy one. And you know that thing where you're buying a round of drinks for people you don't even know? So it's like, what's the story there? Why am I suddenly bankrolling you drinks? It's like, I don't know you people. I'm not gonna get any kind of, I'm not gonna see you again to sort of reap the benefits at a later point. Because he came in I'm with not, his three Most of you are married or engaged, so I'm not even gonna pull from it. It, it was, was a waste of time. It was, it was like, just it, pure generosity. It was something like from Swingers, because he came into the cocktail bar holding three chips up worth ten pounds each yeah. and went, hello, <laughs> like that. Yeah, I was yeah. thirty pounds up. That's a lot of money, uh, you know, Carl, you, yeah. you know that. 30 quid, you don't want to sniff at that. Oh, what, what, what songs should we play? Let's, we've got lots of songs in. It's hard. Bit of, uh, bit of Incubus. Oh. Just right? to make me more depressed. Oh. Is that that? Do you like that? Oh, I thought it was a bit slow. I know, it but was... I'm a fan I of it. I like slow songs, but I, I, I really do like, I've, I've, been, I've always been a fan of it, even from, you know, early days. Yeah. I, I, I thought his first song was really great and much maligned. People didn't like it, because they were expecting, like, you know, the verve. Yeah. Yeah. Urban hymns and all that. Yeah. But yeah. Oh, that's, that's, that's great. On XFM 104.9. Who are you? Ricky Gervais, who are you? Steve Merchant. Who's that little round headed oh, fellow? Oh, yes, Carl Pilkington. Carl, we've had a lot of Carl today. He's a bit tired, aren't you? Just a little bit. What Just happened? Bit you annoyed, you came back from Edinburgh today as well, didn't you, on the plane? This morning. Yeah. Got an early. an early flight. Yeah. Um. It's just annoying me because there's. there was like people on the plane fighting over, um. Where they wanted to sit. Uh, Surely they've got designated seats. Well, they have, but that wasn't good enough for them. They wanted like they wanted to sit next to the friends and that. And it's like, well, you can't because you didn't check in together. So that's that's the way it is. Yeah, done. But the thing is, it's from Edinburgh, forty minutes. Yeah, and I just don't understand this sort of. You can stand for that long, can't you? Well, what, why do you have to sit next to the person anyway, to be honest? I mean, fair enough, if you're going on a long flight, someone to talk to, but for 40 minutes, it really doesn't matter. I never want anyone to talk to. I, I don't want anyone sitting next to me to talk to me. Why? Well, what are they there for? What? I, I don't mean people I go with. I mean, if I'm travelling alone and I sit next to someone, I don't want them to talk to me. Yeah, but... I don't really... If I was travelling with you, I'd really not want you to talk to me. <laughs> not if you're gonna talk like this. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, this is this. Oh, you sound like you're suicidal, mate. It was just a couple of people arguing. It's over, man. Yeah. The plane journey's finished. He's, Why he's, is he still stewing? He paid 160 quid and he's not winning. He doesn't care. He's 165 quid. Let's get it right. <laughs> if we're going to bring it up, we're going to mention it. <laughs> and it's like Waterford looks back to him. He's, he just, just, he just, he goes, it, mate, he said, he said to me, Rick, it's only money, is, and money is just something you have in case you don't die tomorrow. He's got a great attitude towards money, Steve. It's like, easy come, easy go. So just take a leaf out of Steve the I'm not spending that much merchant, and you'll have a happier life. Sorry, I just need to defend myself for a minute. There what? are certain instances in life where, you see, you know you're giving me an attitude like that I'm tight. It's not tight. No, it's no, the, no, 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 shut no, up. No, Let no, me defend no, myself. It's not, not that I'm tight with money, it's that I want to get value for money at all times. Yeah. Because, uh, you know, I, you probably got a lot of cash given to you, maybe it's pocket money when you were a kid. I Every didn't. penny I've ever had is been money I've earned. Yeah. So frankly, yeah. I'm gonna spend it wisely. Like, for instance, you might be, say you're in a party or so you're at a party, maybe out in a bar with some, someone's birthday, you get talking to a girl, right? Maybe you buy her some drinks, right? You're chatting to her, mm. and then you're chatting away for two hours, and then at the end of the evening she says, oh, da 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 da, -da I gotta go meet my boyfriend now. Right? She's wasted my money and my time there. Yeah. That's two hours wasted and money wasted, right? Now, she should have told me straight away that she had a boyfriend, and I wouldn't have bothered with right. her. I'd have moved on, I'd have looked on to her. What like she thought she was just having a chat with another human being? Though, Rick, where you, I'm being deliberately deceived, <laughs> <laughs> so people can extract money from me or interesting conversation. Yeah. She knew what I was after. It was yeah. obvious, the drooling yeah. mouth, you yeah. know, the, the beady eyes, and and and, and yet she was leading me on, and she was a prostitute. And think how he felt about that. I mean, what a no, slap in the face. No, let's not try and cheapen it with that kind of cheap sexual innuendo, right? She she had occasionally <laughs> slept with me for, for, for money. <laughs> it wasn't for money, it was for meals. Yeah. It no, but the <laughs> point was, no, do you know what I mean? It's just that sort of attitude generally in my life. He's like, don't waste my time, you know? Don't waste my time or my money. You're like, life is, sh the clock is ticking as far as yeah. I'm concerned. And, you know, and so just, if, if, if you've got a boyfriend and I come up and I'm chatting you up, just let me know and I'll or move on. I won't bother you. Or yes, please. This, I'm glad you mentioned that because I feel we should, they should definitely introduce some kind of you see, system. the problem is that women without boyfriends will be wearing those badges now and you won't be able to, you know what I mean, you won't be able to say, have you really got a boyfriend? <laughs> no, I just think there should be some kind of sort of, this sort of, there should be an etiquette, there should be an understanding. Yeah. You know, cos they know, yeah. I, they can see what I'm after, it's <laughs> obvious. <laughs> is it obvious, yes, is it? Yes, I make you're it not, very clear. You're not a subtle man. No, I just come over and pant. Do you still, do you still try and attract their attention by throwing small rocks at them? Yeah. As they walk down the, yeah, does that, has that yeah. ever worked? Occasionally. Is it really? You know, the desperate ones or homeless ones. Oh, the homeless but ones. He once, right, he said to me, he came in to, uh, uh work and he said, uh, I gave a homeless girl a, a pound, right? Cos I fancied her. He said, is that wrong? Is that really bad? I of don't me? think it is, you see. I don't <laughs> think it is because it seems to me if she, she was an attractive homeless girl and she deserves some of my money. Cause I in just my imagine mind, him slowing down. I imagine him like going past loads of tramps going, get out of it, get a job. And she goes, he go, ah, <laughs> hello. But I have to say, I did for a moment just pause and think to myself whether I could kind of scoop her up in my arms, take her back to my place and kind of turn her life around like my fair lady. <laughs> oh, yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean? Good, and yeah. kind of teach her to speak properly and dress her up in smart clothes and take her out into sort of society. Yeah. I think that's where your first mistake was. She said, listen, love, I'm up for it if I can hose you down. <laughs> that was where you went wrong. <laughs> Smith's Cemetery Gates. Great, wasn't it? Always cracking. Off Queen is Dead. Voted best album of all time, I think, in an enemy poll. I don't think it is their Strange best album. Strange Ways Here We Come. I agree. By I, far the I, best. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. Cracking. Anyway, Carl, yeah, so people are arguing on the flight. How, how did you enjoy Edinburgh, by the way, anyway? Because I saw you up there briefly with you and, um, Nick Frost, your new mates, Nick Frost and Simon Pegg. You know, uh, he prefers them to us now. I know, apparently, I could tell that from just talking to him, It, really. it was just, it was the way he was sort of looking at them, over there, like, he was just smiling at Nick Frost. He's, it's his new best chum. You love right. Nick Frost, don't Would you? you have preferred it, right, <laughs> if I went to Edinburgh and, and had to sit with some people that I really didn't like? Would no. you have, would you have been happier for me? No, uh, do you know, but right. I, 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 so I had a great time with yeah. Simon and Nick and the and the nice people. But, but, but he kept going, he kept going, he kept going to uh, oi, oi, Nick, tell Ricky that story. And he th and Nick and Simon, well, wow, all it was, right? And they're ghost stories. That's he loves them because they believe in ghosts. Oh, it's not, not just they're great well, blokes with great sense of humour. Just because they believe in ghosts, you go and tell them that. He goes, how do you explain that? I was going, well, I wasn't there. What was that one you told me? And it was completely wrong about the. It was uh. Oh yeah, right. It's years ago. Oh yeah. Uh, some, some in olden days. Oh sure. When some ghosts like, roamed the earth. What's the holiday? Yeah. Some doctor or something who was into like the way bodies work. Um, they got their head cut off. Uh, who and did the doctor? Yeah, he was doing a bit of an experiment. And he cut his own head off. He, yeah. Okay. And it was about. Um, he said, "When my head's in the basket, I'm going to blink my eyes." Right. Okay. Sorry. Hang on. Let, let him finish. <laughs> And, um... So the doctor 
has chopped his own head off, and, and he's told everyone, I'm gonna blink my eyes to no, prove he's that he's in the basket, the and he goes like, right, I'm gonna blink my eyes about, f you know, as many times as I can, to quick count them, and, and they count, and he got to, like, 15 before he, he, he right. died. Right, now, this is how Carl told me that. Till, till Nick Frost explained that, Carl told, you know, he said, right, well, a bloke, right, he had his head cut off, and as, and it, when his head was in the basket, he went, count how many times I can blink. <laughs> and I went, well, that's rubbish. He went, no. And Nick went, well, no, he, he actually said, when my head's in the basket. I, he went, and Carl went, oh, I said, I said, Carl, do you know the subtle difference? Do you see the subtle difference? I between have to say, though, guys, I still don't really understand what went on there. I really, you've well, both well, lost me. Uh, the story is that a bloke who'd been found doing, um, uh, you know, You mean uh, that Carl just explained it and that was a clear version? Because <laughs> <laughs> I still don't know what you're talking about, Carl. <laughs> well, this bloke. Had his head cut off at uh, experiments against God. He was a doctor in the, you know, uh, in olden times. Yeah. And when they cut his head off, um, why did they cut his head off? Um, because uh, it was uh, he it was, was crimes against exactly he was executed. Yeah, and uh, uh, he said to his assistant, "When my head's in the basket, I'm going to blink. Count how many times I blink and write it down as an experiment." Right? Carl told it to me like his head was cut off and he went in the basket. And when his head was in the basket, he looked up and said, <laughs> "Count how many times I blink." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love that. I love the difference in that story. Yeah. yeah. Both rubbish, yeah. but, um, you know, one's, one's Why possible you, you and one isn't. Anything, you believe anything that you're told except when we tell you the truth. Right, yeah. here's one. Christ. Ghosts and that we got, we got talking about. Sure. Yeah. And Nick, uh, Nick said, right, he said, you'll like this one. Huh? He said, uh, my, uh, my auntie, um, was having loads of problems. Why are you whispering? It? It's not illegal like, to talk oh, about ghosts on the radio. No, but, but it's eerie, and, this. Um, so, um, <laughs> the aunt is in the house and that, and, um, furniture's moving about all the time. Oh, God. And they were like, no, oh, this Oh, is... Steve, you told me this one. This is such rubbish, mate. No, come I'm on, let's listen. I'm gonna leave it to you. I'm gonna sit back and l enjoy it. I'm just gonna watch your face, Steve. <laughs> right. Sorry, so, so I missed said, the beginning uh, there, Carl. There's an antenna. Right, basically, age. Nick's auntie. Right. Um, in the house, things moving around all the time. Oh, and it was just annoying every time she tidied up. It was like, oh, <laughs> it's just annoying. Making a mess. <laughs> It was one part annoying to two parts scary. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> so, <laughs> oh so stuff dear. was stuff was moving around all the time, and yeah. they said, right, rather than right, we need an housekeeper. Yeah. Rather than having the house a mess, uh, <laughs> until we sort Stop this out. Stop it! <laughs> Coming round. Stop moving stuff this. around. Oh, yeah, go on. They said that should be in the pants drawer. <laughs> <laughs> Let's put all the furniture in one room, right? right. So uh, just have one room. That's a mess, and have all the others <laughs> empty. Because I love the poltergeist can't really. Uh, it can move for wardrobes around, but it can't open the door to put it in another room. Yeah. Poltergeist going. Oh, I'm just making this room messy. I wish someone opened the door so I could. F go on. Yeah, but. So, so all this stuff's in this room. So they right? moved all their furniture everything into one room. Everything they put like the drawers in there and everything, and <laughs> it was really uncomfortable because they were all like on top well, of each other. They sat in the room with all the stuff. Yeah, they had to because that's where the three piece suite was. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh god. Right. All right. Oh god. So they sat there, like, all crumpled up and that, but nothing can move because it's so tight. Things, yeah. I think things were trying to move. Yeah, but yeah, Everything yeah, yeah. was so tight. It's they just foxed like, that reporter, guys. So, um, so anyway, one night they sat there, like, sort of, bit awkward watching the telly and that, and, um, they hear some banging. Yeah. In the next room. <laughs> so, uh, she goes, oh god, what's that? Oh, he hadn't moved in, had he, the ghost? So, uh. Um, <laughs> some of the empty rooms. So there's this banging. <laughs> He's moved some friends and family in. <laughs> there's this banging about going on. No, so this, 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 she, this she gets up, right? Yeah. And what it is, they had the baby in the next room because there wasn't much room for the cot. Right, so they left the baby with, with the ghost. <laughs> <laughs> so, they go into the room where the baby is, <gasps> and the banging. Yeah. Is like, do you know those plastic balls you get that you can chuck around the room and like, they go mental? Right. The ones that you chuck once and yeah, they keep bouncing yeah, yeah, for ages. Yeah, yeah. That was bouncing around the room. Why? What, the baby all, had thrown it? It in all the walls. And the baby was there, stood in the cot, sort of laughing. Right. And looking at the ball and wherever it looked, the ball went. Yeah. And then she said, uh, she said, stop doing that. Yeah. And the ball just stopped. Did it? And it, and it rolled a bit and stopped. Right. So the baby had thrown the ball and it was watching it as it bounced around the room. It wasn't throwing it, it was in control of it. No, the point is, Steve, the baby has been doing it. It would have been the baby all along. The baby had been messing with the furniture. It was so a baby a that super had the power. Baby. <laughs> yeah, it's a baby that had the power. Special, ba special baby. It's a baby that had the power. It's what, what a baby power? that had the power. What, the, power the power of telekinesis. Right. They were then trying to convince me that uh, telekinesis was not like all the other stuff that I didn't believe in, but that was a science. Right. Telekinesis was possible. Yes. Yeah. It's not. It's not like. It's not like ghosts and demons and uh, all that stuff. Telekinesis is different. Yeah. That, that's yeah. A science. Um, but ne but 
Nick's auntie saw it and- I love the fact that you're telling me that someone else's auntie <laughs> saw it. <laughs> so I should be- I should be satisfied with that. Yeah. I, I, I should be satisfied with that. I mean- no. So does she still live in one room with all her possessions? No, I think the uh, baby grew out of it. Apparently, it, it grew <laughs> the baby grew out of it. it. So it doesn't use its telekinesis powers no. anymore. Well, no, it's no. like in Carrie, in it. She she was upset for a bit, and then she got over it. Okay, I'm yeah. just gonna say one thing, Carl. Um, that was a film. Do you want to play <laughs> record or? Oh. Get free, all right? On XFM one hundred four. Can I, can I just tell you a story that Carl told me a couple of weeks ago? Is this another um, ghost story? Another yeah, it is, story? yeah. Um, uh, I called him out, I was, what are you doing? He said, oh, I said, I've just been reading ghost stories again. He went, th he said, right, he said, you don't believe in them, but how do you explain this? So I went, go on. He said, uh, I'll tell you as he told me it. He went, um, bloke, right, just sitting at home, just sitting at home, doing, you know, watching telly with his, with his cat. And, uh, the phone rings and it's a bloke going, uh, oh, uh, is that fire? Uh, in your oven okay now, um, cos your wife called. And he went, Carl went, well, one, there was no fire in the oven, two, he wasn't married. <laughs> I went, right. Go on, he went, well. Then, right, there was a knock at the door and there was two sort of people in sort of well, white coats and they, and they came and said, oh, we've come about that fire. Your wife called us. He went, one, there isn't a fire in my oven and two, I'm not even married. Right? And he said, and they saw the cat, and they sort of, they looked at the cat, it looks a bit weird at the cat, the cat came out, and they went, uh, uh, and, uh, he said, and then he went back, it sat down, phone rings, and they said, oh, uh, did they sort out the fire in the oven that your wife told us about? Oh. He went, one, there is no fire in my oven, two, I haven't got a wife. And Carl went, what do you think of that? I went, that's not it. <laughs> he went, yeah, I went. <laughs> That's the end of the I went, story. What? 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 He went, well, how'd you explain that? I went, explain what? I thought he was gonna say, <laughs> a year later we got married but she died in an oven fire. <laughs> right? I thought it was gonna be that. And I went, That's what? people winding him up. Yeah. Or, 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 or um, someone did report a fire in an oven and their name was Johnson and they looked up Johnson, they got the wrong thing, it was the gas board or that, <laughs> and they sent around to the wrong person, right? You know, he, he, went, he went, yeah. I said, I explained it to him, he went, yeah. Why did they look at the cat funny? <laughs> Oh, man alive, Carl. <laughs> this is really weird, right? I was, um, <coughs> I was, uh, in my house once, right, and the doorbell rang. Yeah. Right, I opened the door, there was no one there. Yeah. Right? And then I looked across the street, there was right, some kids and there were some kids running away. Yeah. Now, how do you explain that? Yeah. There was another time, right, where, like, I, I opened the door and there was a bloke goes, you've ordered pizza. I went, I haven't ordered pizza. And I heard my mate upstairs giggling and putting the phone down. Yeah. How do you explain that? Carl, seriously, what did you, why did you tell me that story? What did you think, what did you think that was weird about that? The fact that it was three different people. Is this all the information? Is that the entire story? Have you, did it was you, three different people. Did you fall asleep and not read the end? A fire that didn't happen, about a wife that didn't exist, <laughs> and a cat that didn't look happy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm gonna have a heart attack, Carl. What? I mean, why? Why did they look at the cat funny? Because what? cats don't don't like um, spirits, do they? <laughs> And the other blokes were ghosts. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 That's it. So these are, these are kind of beetle about type ghosts. <laughs> these are ghosts who walk the st walk the earth as the ah! undead, just winding oh, people up slightly. That's lovely. That is but lovely. Seriously, and a cat that did not look happy. But seriously, why would ghosts <laughs> wander around just like winding people up? <laughs> oh. Maybe something did happen there years ago. Mm. Some fire. Some woman might have died in the house of a fire or something. Yeah. And yeah. uh it sort of all happened again. Bit yeah. Of a yeah. It's certainly a mystery. It's certainly I mean, if you don't, it is a mystery. Yeah. I mean, I can't. I. What's can't, this I, book you were reading? You were reading a book, which is interesting enough. There was um. It was the fourteen fourteen times. Oh, Carl. Yeah. yeah. Well, I don't, I, don't know, I don't know what to say. Well, I'll tell you this, Carl, there is a track that will, uh, that will spook you right out. <laughs> this is Warren Zevon from, uh, what was it, like about 1979, early oh, 80s? Oh, great track. Werewolves of London, play this, Carl, but don't be scared. <laughs> from 1978, Carl, Werewolves of London by Warren Zevon, are you a fan of that? It's alright, that's a great track, isn't it? Fans right. of Warren Zevon, maybe if you should know he's got a new album out. Um, as we speak. Although, if you're a fan, you probably know that already. Yeah. If you are a People fan, who hate him would yeah. be interested in knowing <laughs> yeah. that he's got a new album out. Yeah. Do you believe in, uh, I Where think, else? Lycanthropy? Is it, is it not called? What's that, sorry? Lycanthropy. What's Lycanthropy? Isn't that 
wa werewolfism, really? isn't it? Isn't it? Do you believe in that, Carl? They've, they've they've found stuff, haven't they? They've found kids walking about who are all airy because because right. uh, <laughs> they've, they've sort of grew up with uh, wolves and that. Yeah. So no, you see <laughs> two things there. Um, right, uh, you cannot take on acquired uh, characteristics genetically. So if you grew up with wolves, it wouldn't suddenly make you hairy. Uh, there's been pictures, there's been pictures, there's been stories on it, and I reckon most people have, or a lot of people have seen the stories, it's a popular you thing. Mean, you mean the kids that are born hairy? No, no, there's kids who've been born hairy, right? Yeah, that's it. No, but listen, and they walk around on all fours, <laughs> and they drink milk from a saucer. <laughs> Oh, Steve, this is no, too No, remember, easy. listen, remember that time with the maggot and the head? Yeah. Um, getting out with bacon and you were like laughing and then people called up and said, yeah, I've, I've seen that, I've read about that. Yeah, this but is the you, same thing. have you seen an XFM listener up close? Have you ever looked, They studied? drink milk from a saucer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they've got to be kept on leads, people who listen to this show. There's, there's no point in me telling you about stuff. There is, it's comedy you see, gold. When you, when you were out of school, did you keep arguing with the teacher saying you're talking rubbish there? Teachers did teach us about werewolf boys and ghosts. They taught us maths. God. Right, tell the story about the man I'll cover. Right, in the same magazine as, uh, as the one with the, with the cat and the fire and that. Don't tell me that story again, it gives me the shit. Yeah, a cat that's <laughs> got a weird expression on his yeah. face is well, against it, God. Anyway, this isn't a scary story, this was just, uh, like physics. Explained. Physics. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it was right. going on about the, uh, nuclear bomb and uh, how powerful it is. And uh <laughs> they put they put a manhole cover on top of one. <laughs> okay. Blew it up. Yeah. Never saw the manhole cover again. <laughs> <laughs> Man alive, Carl. <laughs> What's that. going on there? Something weird is happening there! <laughs> oh. oh! If anyone has ever seen that manhole cover, <laughs> yeah, uh, please yeah. get in touch, we'd love to know where it is. Oh, that's fantastic. What sort of experiment is that? I imagine all these scientists on multi-billion pound research budgets, they're going, we test everything, what would you do to manhole cover? Don't know. That's like letting a couple of students... <laughs> Uh, yeah, exactly, yeah. Of a Do you reckon it can send a traffic cone, cone yeah. into orbit? Go on then, put it on there. <laughs> I love that. I imagine that. What? What, of what value is that? <laughs> I'm like, so what we could do, we could let the, put the manhole cover on it and aim it and then blow the bomb up and it would, <laughs> it would, the manhole cover would have someone's eye out! <laughs> fire it! See if you can fire manhole covers <laughs> off the nuclear bomb. I don't know. Tie bangers to a bomb, see if it's louder. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> okay, listen, Carl, play another track and then afterwards, can we probe your views on the, the week's news? If you want. We'll do a bit of a white van Carl session. <laughs> Hopkins. Today. Today. Today, Today is the greatest, because yeah. we're back. That's true enough. All right. I hope people, uh, Rick, were listening to that loud, uh, in this lovely summer's day. Or, or I mean, or, no, not too loud. Well, don't, 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 don't annoy, annoy people that, yeah. yeah um, yeah. White, White Van, van Carl. Yeah, White Van Carl, I mean, uh, for those that don't know, we do this, uh, We ask week. Carl the questions that the Sun asked someone else. That's right, the Sun every day asks, um, some, you know, average Joe, his views on the week's big stories. Mm. Carl, let me ask you now, um, what do you make of Prince Harry smoking openly at a polo club? Um, Are you aware of this story? No. Was it? Go on. Prince Harry, you know that he's one of the royals. Yeah. And he was seen smoking openly, openly, a fag, a cigarette. Uh, a polo third, club, third right? in line to the throne. Something like that, yeah. Imagine that. Someone hey? smoking a cigarette who's third in line to the throne. A cigarette, Carl. Is it a non-smoking polo club? Do you know, I don't know, but, uh, but if it were... Would that make things even worse for you? Well, no, yeah. seriously, what, what do you make of it? This is, this is, you know, the whole, you know, the, the Ferrari is, he's a role model, you know, he's a royal, should he be seen puffing away in a public place? I don't think it matters, does it? Not a concern for you? How old is he? Is he old enough to smoke? I think he probably is, yeah. Right, yeah. Well, yeah. I, I think the trouble with, um, this role model thing, with anything that's legal, it should either be illegal or not. Yeah. I just don't think you can impose things like that, right, yeah. uh, because you could say that it is bad for you and it is bad to start smoking and it really is bad for you and it, you know, it causes cancer and everything. But everyone knows so that, don't they? Uh, well, yeah, but you should either make it illegal or shut up about it. So this is Carl you're asking, isn't I it? I am indeed. So, so, yeah. so we can throw these questions your way as well <laughs> yeah, if you fancy. Sorry, yeah. <laughs> but it doesn't so, matter. 
But Carl, what are your views generally? I mean, it's obviously cigarettes are uh, perfectly legal and so on, but what about stronger narcotics? Because I know you're very scared of drugs and stuff, aren't you? You're no, very... I don't, I'm not a fan. I don't no, know. what's your concern? What's your worry? Just right. that you might get into them. Sure. It's like you might have them and go, oh, this is all right. Yeah. Exactly, Carl. Yeah. Exactly. Um, uh, Although I was talking to you about it earlier and you weren't that very, you weren't very sympathetic about a lot of young people who, who have perhaps gone to crack or smack. You, you, didn't you describe it as their own fault? Sometimes it is, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, I could have turned to it where I grew up, but I said, well, don't want to do that, it's not good for you. Sure. And I avoided it. You turned to ghosts. So you've so got no sympathy for anyone who's, who's a drug addict? It's their own fault, is your- It depends, your doesn't it? Sure. Do you know what I mean? You can be an addict if- I don't know, something- I'm trying to think of a nice way that well, you might- Well, most people start on stuff like that because something really traumatic has happened to them. Very few people go out for a laugh yeah. one night and, and- and go, let's all try it. Sure. So, uh, you know, but- yeah. Just anyway. say no, I suppose is the, uh, the, the action no. in the Listen end. to the uh, cast of Grange Hill. Now, this will scare you. Now, this, Carl, you will be a little bit unnerved about this. Have you seen the film Jurassic Park? Yeah. You know what happened there? Well, according to yeah. the sign here, it says scientists are planning to clone mammoths for a theme park. Look at his face, look at that, he looks like a dog caught in the, the headlights of a car, he's terrified. I love Carl. He sprung to attention Carl. there. I lo that's, is that, is that the best news you could have? Man moths. <laughs> <laughs> Right, yeah, man Carl, moths. I man love moths. the fact that that's why he was so excited that they bred a man moth. What is what is this? Yeah, it's it's a human being that that hides in your wardrobe and eats an entire jacket in a day. Yeah. yeah. What do you mean, man moths? Mammoths. Mammoth. The big hairy cow the from the Ice Age. I mean, right. elephant. You're not so excited yeah. about that, then. <laughs> you can take or leave bringing back mammoths to life, but a man moth. A man moth is a different matter. <laughs> oh, if we'd have, if we'd have uh, never brought that up, he'd have gone and told someone now. Yeah, you know, I've bred an half man, half moth. This and is that's what how, we this mean. how things start. This you is what we mean when you, you hear these ghost stories. Are you slightly deaf? Is that it? When you hear these stories, you're slightly deaf. And his head and his head was in the basket, and he went count how many times I blink. Is it? I is Carl? Uh, is English your first language? <laughs> Are you actually foreign? Is that yeah, the thing? Yeah. Do, should we well, speak slower? When we say foreign, we, we mean not of this planet. Yeah. Should we speak slower? Would that be a help to you? No. Go, go on. Next what do you one. make of that? Do you think that's good? Do you think good to bring back, back mammoths? Prehistoric <laughs> animals. These giant elephants. They're, they're slow, aren't they? It's not as if they're gonna, like, get out and run fast and they can't capture them. They'll probably be like offence, to be honest, Carl. They'll probably be offence. No, but, I'm si but, they're, but you're asking it as if, like, oh, it could all go wrong, but it couldn't, could it? Well, really? but, but, but the point was about uh, Jurassic Park is they thought it wouldn't go wrong, they thought they had it all under yeah, control. Have you learned nothing from uh, Jurassic Park, Carl? Dinosaurs would say, oh, f think about it before you do it, but <laughs> with a, with a airy elephant, it's, it's not gonna- Not a concern for you. Would oh, you go along to see him? Would you be interested in that? If it was in the area. <laughs> <laughs> He's the best. He's great, isn't he? I'd love, I'd love a cue. Nothing right? impresses No, him. but what I'd like to do is Carl sit in like Yoda in a little cave, and I'd just like to see people like Tony Blair and you know Stephen Hawking's in a queue, and they go and say, Carl, got a bit of a problem. Um, yeah, and thinking it, of cloning a man and a moth. Yeah. Problem? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, not an issue. No, if I'm in the area, I want cruise around and have a look at it. Otherwise, just don't send it near my uh, my clothes. Um, oh, that's fantastic. So, so it's just for a second. What, what, as, the, as the words man moth came into your head. W how excited were you? I mean, were you both terrified and excited? For- just for the moment when you thought that they'd cloned a man and a moth? I pictured, um... What kind of face I'll, did he have? Was, did he have the moth's head or was it a man's head? Just a little head. Little man head. Right, what- what was his face? <laughs> what did it look like? Just- he just was like a bit like- A bit, a bit shocked. perplexed, yeah. <laughs> um... Yeah, it, like, so it was like he'd been- he'd been- he'd been grafted onto the body of a moth yeah. without his- his consent. And when he was asleep. Little yeah, he'd woken up. He just- he just went in for to have a goiter removed yeah. and they said, we've he replaced your goiter wings. with the body of a giant moth. Yeah. Just Is that alright, Mr Jenkins? So he had the head of a, a little- was it a little boy or a man? Little man. Right, okay. And he's just bumping into a lamp. <laughs> he's just bumping into a lamp. <laughs> if you- Carl, if you- if you uh, went into hospital, a and they'd done something. Uh, what, what's the worst thing they could do, right? What would you rather have done, do you, right? You wake up and you've got, um, lobster claws for hands. Right. You wake up and you've got duck's feet. Uh, or you wake up and you've got one horn coming out of your head. The worst thing. Yeah. Probably the, uh, <laughs> the horn coming out of my head. <laughs> Why? Get in the way. <laughs> That'd be useful, wouldn't it? In fights and stuff. And, uh, for, like, parties, people would play Well, points. I the lobster claws would also be quite handy there. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> Black Level Motorcycle Club.
Spread your love. You enjoying it so far? Um, yeah, I, I suppose so. First show back? Yeah, it's not bad. It's great to be I'm back. I'm just thinking about that money, really, to be honest. It's I know, still playing on my must, mind. I know, yeah. Could we maybe get like a sort of telethon type thing going or a little charity thing? Just sort of help me pay You me. can't really ask people to send you money. Really? It's technically begging. Is it? <laughs> yeah. Okay, Unless you're a are, you, are, are you a registered charity? <laughs> um, I suppose not. Not really. We could probably get you status. Yeah. But could I promise, I mean, could I pretend to give them something in return? I mean, am I allowed to sell things on the radio? Yeah, you are. Yeah, yeah. So Although you probably, you probably get in trouble with uh, the authority if you're, you're using it to sort of like, to your own, okay, not like everyone else doesn't. No, exactly. Yeah. Free lunches and yeah. sponsorship and yeah, God knows yeah, what, yeah. you know what I mean? The, yeah. Put the people that work here, small fry, the yeah. scum. Exactly, the nobodies, yeah. Yeah. But, uh, 165 quid is pretty, it's quite a lot of money, so I mean, if you want to contribute anything, Rick, as I said before, you're more than welcome to. Yeah, no, yeah. I, I, I would if it, if I felt any responsibility right. or, yeah, or, or cared. Sure, sure. Um, but, uh, yeah, I got there too early, which is annoying. <laughs> um, what we should have done, really, was, uh, get you your plane and come back, because I'd have had time. Do you know, I, I was gonna mention <laughs> it at the time, but I didn't want to, because I knew the answer would be no. So <laughs> <not>. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, Carl. Oh, I, 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 I Really, I've had a great time. I've forgotten, I've forgotten how good it was just to have a normal com- I say normal, just to have a conversation with you. Have you been looking forward to this? You're, you're, he's really down today, isn't he? He's down, man, isn't he? just a bit tired. But it's interesting, because I said to him, I said to him, did you enjoy Edinburgh? He spent this, the week up in Edinburgh, yeah. obviously, and uh, he said, yeah, well, after him, he loved it up there, he's been mm. partying every night, and he actually enjoyed it, and I've never, I've never met him when he's actually enjoyed anything before. He's never enjoyed anything, as far as I know, and I'm his depressed that we weren't involved. His, pa his, his paper round. He loved the paper round, and this Best is the first time yeah, he's He was talking about that the other day as well, but I said to him, I, that's what he really thinks that that paper round he had when he was 14 was the best job. He never had. Yeah, he still thinks yeah. it's the best job because he was own. He said he was his own boss. Well, no, you weren't. <laughs> he went. Well, I can get on my bike and think. And he said, "I bet if I phoned those people who I delivered the papers to, they'd say it was the best delivery they've ever." Had. He said, "In fact, I bet a lot of them have chucked in the delivery because it went downhill." This is all. It's yeah, all yeah, yeah, he's yeah. thinking this. Yeah. He went along. Yeah. Didn't you? Yeah. Imagine phoning someone up and saying, "You don't remember me, but I used to deliver your paper ten years ago. Was it the best delivery service <laughs> you've ever had?" <laughs> no, but if I said I delivered it ten years ago. Um, you used to, if you got up at like six in the morning, it was there for you. Yeah. There's no other paper boy who could guarantee that they'd have that paper when they got Carl, out of if bed. you could earn enough money, would you do a paper round again? If you, if that was your job, but we, you were being paid enough to make a living from it, would, would that, is that something you think about? Uh, do you think you'd enjoy it as much nowadays? Yeah, I reckon I would, yeah. Yeah? Yeah, listen to some music. Sure. Uh, a thousand pound a week, would you do the best yeah, at- Yeah, Would you really? Yeah. Is would, there anyone- out there, who is willing to test that? So anyone who's willing to pay Carl, right, a, grand. a sum of my, a grand, yeah. to take a week off work and deliver papers, just for that week. All day though, it's all day. No, 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 no. I'll what? get up and the the customers will have their paper. Yeah, but can I tell you what street it is? No, because I, no, no, it's the M25. <laughs> See, you are being paid a thousand pounds. Yeah, Carl. thousand pounds. Oh, you got to deliver the M25. I'll tell you what. Let's 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 take the mood down a little bit and play one of the most beautiful songs I've been looking forward to getting. Otherwise, just to play this. To be honest, it's Jimmy Webb's uh, version of Galveston. Galveston, there by the brilliant Jimmy Webb. Uh huh. Who wrote it? Who wrote it? He wrote it. Yes. I mean, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Really, Webb, who wrote it? Yeah. It was all one sentence. Yes. Did I confuse you? Again, yeah. With my speech patterns. It's just, just using the English language is always helpful, right? But compared to Carl, I'm, I'm Oscar Wilde, aren't <laughs> I? I suppose so. <laughs> Be afraid. Electric Soft Parade on XFM 104.9. Not long to go on our, uh, on our ret a triumphant return, I think. Uh, oh, I well, think I the pace would be sane, Steve. Yes, yes. Um, Carl, um, I was, I was met Carl a couple of times in our, our, our sabbatical, and uh, he uh, said to me once, he said, um, oysters. I said, have you ever tried oysters? I, said, I, I, I don't like them. And I went, uh, he said, oh, it's just, just a thing about swallowing them whole, you know. He went, well, the reason you have to do that is just they're, they're fatally poisonous. <laughs> and if you bite into them, they kill you. And I went, well, of course they don't. He went, yeah. I went, well, of course. <laughs> they wouldn't. What have you chewed on? I said. He said no. I said, well, so you swallow them whole and they're not poisonous. He went, yeah, ah, see. He said, so he said when you swallow heroin in a in a Johnny, he says that doesn't kill you, does it? <laughs> <laughs> that was it. Oh. And then uh, about a week later, he went, I was wrong about them. <laughs> you were. Yeah. I went. Well, he said, yeah, yeah, yeah. And what did you say? It's if you eat them and then you have some whiskey. <laughs> 
they they turn deadly when when whiskey comes into contact with them. Yeah, when when uh, when they've had a drink. <laughs> drink, they get a bit rowdy in your stomach. They right. start fighting. They can yeah, cause get hilarious. So, 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 what, so what are you saying now? Are you saying you don't believe that? Am I saying what? Are you saying you don't believe? Look, that? He thinks he's got us here. He thinks he's got us here. Yeah, I don't believe that if you eat an oyster, then drink some whiskey, you die. You might not die straight away, but you won't. Feel Eventually, old. fifty years time. If you've got, you've got to keep on drinking whiskey. Uh, yeah, 50, a bottle a day. Fifty or sixty years later, he was dead. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oyster and a bottle of whiskey a day. <laughs> oh, then. Out of nowhere, 40 years Wh later. Where has this information come from, Carl? If, if some doctor called up now yeah. and put you right, would you believe him? If it wasn't Dr. Fox. Yeah. <laughs> what about the airy, airy lads growing up with the werewolves and that? They didn't grow up with werewolves. They didn't werewolves. grow up with werewolves. You've confused They're about three different stories, It's a genetic stories, mutation where, the, you know, they were born with a uh, very, very hirsute. There were a couple of kids, yes, They didn't we grow know. up with wolves and you can't kill them with a silver bullet. I mean... You're confusing two things. There aren't were you? some kids who were very, very hairy. Yes, yeah. they're in folklore. There were some kids who grew up with wolves. Yes, I don't think the two are connected. Yeah. Mm. There's yeah. no such thing as werewolves, Carl. You, you believe grew me. Up I saw a documentary on it on the History Channel. You'd have loved it. You, you, you grew the up with a magpie. Of werewolves. You know, you donn't flap around, do you, and steal people's jewellery? Yeah. What was the thing you told me about snails? Uh, have you ever had any? Um, <laughs> Any post that that looks like it's been opened? Occasionally, yeah, yeah. All right. Well, what it is? It's not your postman having a a sneaky look. A sneaky look. Problem is, right? Uh, slugs. <laughs> the problem, slugs. Slugs at <laughs> night. They like nipping about and that, and it gets a bit cold. And in London, like in the country, they go into the grass, don't they? Right. But in London, it's like, oh, what can we do? <laughs> and um, they go in letter boxes. Right? Slugs go in letter Get boxes. Get in letter bo boxes. It's nice and warm in there, uh, dry and what have you. And um, <laughs> these are homeless slugs, aren't they? The ones that lost their shell. When they're in there, they only found out that they love glue. <laughs> they and love they've, glue. They've been eating uh, eating the glue off the stamps. Right. And um, <laughs> people have been getting charged for posts because it hasn't had stamps on it. It's like, well, they put a stamp on it. Yeah. It's like it's, slugs have been eating it. <laughs> sure. And they also <laughs> eat the glue that's on the actual envelope shutter. And it's a real popular problem, this, that uh, <laughs> letters are being lost and opened and all that stuff. Yeah. Slugs. Are, like, are slugs like stealing post orders and things and cashing them in and stuff? Yeah, again, you know, if there's a doctor, if there's a postman. Yeah. <laughs> Ah, well, with us two expert witnesses, a doctor <laughs> and a postman. So, uh, <laughs> so postage is a real problem. Um, <laughs> so, uh, is, when we see when we see uh, a slug's trail or a snail's trail, it's glue. That's the glue they've stolen, is it? That's they just. That's a little. I'm we, not. I'm not going to say yes to that. that I'm not follow, sure. But we could follow that trail and, and find the, them, and they'd have a big sort of <laughs> big bio uh, letters. Uh, yeah, our stamps and yeah, yeah, there they are. Like birthday cards from aunt, and stuff. Yeah, but two pound notes. Yeah. Oh, that's fantastic. Wow. Slugs. Wow. So, oysters and whiskey kill you, and slugs Be very careful you if you're gonna go out this evening, you're thinking of having a whiskey, maybe some oysters, be very, very careful. Yeah, and if you, are gonna, if you are gonna post a letter, please, please do not please, use please. tasty glue. <laughs>